Hello everybody. Hopefully I'm working today. Last time I got it completely wrong. <laughs> and I faded out the music but forgot to fade my mics in. Now I can see that my mic's working, but can you hear me? How are we getting on? <laughs> Just seeing all the chatter and it seems to be about a certain virus. I don't know what's, what's going on. <laughs> Let's try and steer clear of that as far as we possibly can, especially weird conspiracy theories. It's probably just best not to not to go there. <laughs> uh, thank you, Salem. Uh, good that you can hear me. Can you see me all right? <laughs> uh, I'm assuming all, go all is going okay. Hello, Andy S. Skittle, Daniel Salt. Alas, 2009. Ennis and uh, so forth. Oh, there. <laughs> Thank you, Milan. Straight in there <laughs> with the donation. I really appreciate that. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, thank you. Yes. Thank you very Ooh, much, Milan. Well, Sorry, I was just there uh, looking at some much. of the other chat. Uh, always uh, good of you to uh, donate. Thank you very much. Uh, new hobby. What's going on there? What are you up to? Whoa. That is a big screen. That is a. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a cool little setup you've got going on there. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> is this actually uh, is the, is this your your room and what you have going on? Uh, I'd love to know. That's crazy. <laughs> um I suppose if in case people other people can't see it, that, I'm assuming you don't mind me showing. Look at that. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. Um awesome stuff. Anyway, <laughs> Um, uh, what, uh, the trolls, uh, trolls happening? What's going on? Uh, hello, Robert Shaw. Uh, Robert Saw, sorry. Um, working on the C-Shark Shack, good stuff. I'm probably going to do another sort of beginner type, um, tutorial at some point, um, and have a bit of fun, um, sort of stepping stones idea, like, um, sort of, <laughs> what am I saying? Uh, easy going, uh, sort of hard. Like this, the C Shack scene, but um, uh, sort of that fantasy style. It was good fun that one. So yeah, I'll probably do a similar one to that. <laughs> That's uh, that is your setup there. You might be a little bit obsessed with uh, current events. <laughs> anyway, uh, so today uh, we're continuing the fantasy, um, stylized fantasy art. Uh, and having a bit of fun. Not too worried about poly count. Um, so um, this is the high poly, which I will reduce, and I'm going to show you the techniques I've. Re I've lost it today. Uh, the techniques I'm going to use uh, to, or have used to um, decimate this and make it low poly. So um, if I hide that and show you the low poly, I've done a bit of painting as well. I was just sort of having a think of how I'd like it to look. I'm not sure about this moss, um, but maybe. Yeah, I'm still thinking about it. Any ideas? Let me know. Um, do I have tutorials about lighting? Yes, I've got a few. Um, mainly um, how to make your renders look good. This is Sunny Win Ray he's asking this. Um, so search for that on my channel. And there's one about low poly. Well, I'm doing a low poly scene, but the lighting is still the same, whatever you're using. So there's a few on lighting. If you type in lighting, you should be able to find them uh, on my channel, obviously. Um, and you'll be able to see. Um, I'll talk a fair bit about lighting today because uh, you can see some of the lighting that I've done. So I'm just looking at my, just making sure you can see, making sure the stream's working. We're all good. Um, so uh, where are we? Uh, yeah, so I'm uh, looking at my scene. So I've got a camera and lights here. So if I put those in, and I'm going to talk about this later, uh, using what's called a, either a cookie or a flag in the film industry in front of your light. Uh, use that with environment lights and you get, hopefully it's going to work, this sort of effect, uh, which I think is quite cool. Um, and obviously we can change the temperature of the light, um, color of the light, um, to um, give it a, 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 like it's going in through a foresty, uh, even though it's a diorama on a rock. It doesn't quite make sense, but it looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Um, and we'll be improving that later on. I'm not sure how far I'll get with this, um, but we'll see. Uh, um, it, I'm going to show the process. I thought um, I probably need to do some bits in between occasionally uh, that might be a bit boring. So um, I'm going to go through the whole process. Uh, don't panic uh, that you're missing out on anything. Um, but uh, it, let's just get rid of the lighting for the moment and go back to um, Eevee or LookDev. Um, in fact, that's just LookDev, isn't it? Um, yeah, so the process I did on the 
on the tree uh, to sort of decimate it and paint it a bit. I'm going to go through with the high poly rocks here. So this is just hasn't been decimated or anything like that, and I'll talk about that. Uh, thanks, Ben. Uh, it's uh, great to see my workflow. That's lovely to see. Um, where is my Samsung? What's going on there? <laughs> just having a look at the stream. Um, so I put a, a, um, a uh, what do you call it out, poll out on YouTube um, about <laughs> um, about uh, whether I was interacting with the stream too much. Um, and it came back um, fairly positive that it was okay. Um, about 70% of you were happy uh, that I interacted with the audience. Um, I've probably got to minimize it to a, a bit because it, it can go over the top and get um, a bit too irritating for some. Um, but we can, I'll certainly respond to all the questions. So at Grant Abbott, as people are doing, and it comes up orange for me, so I know it's a question, and then I can focus in on them. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Leet, is it? Uh, a very good paint job on the tree, appreciate that. Having lots of fun there, um, and there's some cool ways of doing this really easily. Um, so I'm gonna hopefully, <laughs> hopefully do it justice today. Uh, where's the depth of field? Oh, well, it does depend on uh, a lot of things. Uh, depth of field in Blender, does my head in it really does uh, and that's a maybe a British term but uh, it frustrates me uh, because I'm sure it doesn't work like a normal camera it, in fact I know it doesn't work like a normal camera but then maybe normal cameras don't work how they're supposed to or something like that maybe the theoretics behind it. I don't know anyway let's not talk about that um, it's it is crazy how much lighting affects the scene isn't it um, and I'll be working on those lights to try and pinpoint areas and to have some fun uh, later on. I might, like I say, I might save that for another tutorial where we focus more on the lighting. But this time we are looking at making this high poly rock, which at the moment is 2 million faces. We're going to turn that into about 2,000. So what's this at the moment? That is, so you can see the face count here. It's a really bad unwrap. And this is uh, this is not for optimizing for games and all this sort of stuff. Um, uh, although you, you could actually use this in a game. Uh, it's, uh, like I say, it's uh, 2,000, oh, it's 3,000 faces. I mean, if your game was literally running around this tree and, or something, um, then you could, but it's still high poly for a game and you could optimize this much more. Um, but for speed of doing sort of like fantasy art uh, without having the render times associated with, or being able to texture paint as well, um, going from a high poly and decimating it, but getting that high poly information onto the low poly is what we're going to talk about today. Um, yep, so I'm going to talk about exactly how I did it. Don't worry, the art kid, uh, you'll see how we go. Yeah, um, exactly, Tom Kayak. Why does Blender need an f-stop of like 0.3, which is like the uh, like the most expensive camera in the world, it has an f-stop of something like uh, 0.4. So that's as low as you can go, I think. Isn't it something like that, 0.4? Maybe it's 0.27 or something. Uh, yet you have to go there with Blender in order to make it work. And I've never understood that. And uh, I even had a, a little bit of a, uh, a to and fro uh, with um, the developers about this, saying that's surely a bug, isn't it? <laughs> and they were, no, it's not a bug. That's how cameras work. I'm thinking, my camera works nothing like that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I mean, it does depend on your lens and things like that, but uh, then I changed the lens in order to make it more of a depth of field. And that, uh, yeah, it didn't work anyway. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, remesh is a way of getting low poly, but there's limitations, and I'll talk about that as well. I'm glad you brought that up, big tricky, uh, because it's not uh, it's not really a low poly tool, uh, and that's uh, what Pablo will say that it's not a low poly tool. But um, it, having said that, the tools, everything in Blender can be used for all sorts of things, and there's no right or wrong way to do things. So if it works, it works. Um, but it's not always going to work. So uh, we'll, I'll show you about the remesh and why it might not work. Okay, let's get into it. So the high poly rock, I'm going to duplicate it. I suppose I'll hide my tree. There we go. So we'll just work on the rock. And you can sort of see what's going on. I suppose I'll go into um, object mode so we can... What do you call it? A solid mode. That's the word. I'll get there eventually. <laughs> Yeah, I suppose to be fair, it's, it's quite confusing on cameras as well, depth of field, isn't it? Um, so uh, I need to make this low poly. So uh, there's rock HP. So I'm going to shift D. Oh, screencast keys, screencast keys. There we go. Um, shift D to duplicate. And left click so it's in place. 
uh, so this is going to be low poly LP. Um, they must be on top of each other for the baking process, which we'll talk about later. So this is um, how to do the baking process. It's quite a complex thing, um, and it might not be one for beginners, but you can still possibly uh, watch to understand um, the approach that uh, is taken for sort of game models and things. And do ask questions as I'm going along as well. Okay, so I've got two. This is going to be called the low poly, so I'll hide the high poly for now. We don't want to touch that. We don't want to edit it in any way just yet. Uh, thank you, JNM, indeed, uh, for the screencast keys. <laughs> Thanks, Mikey Dante. Okay, so uh, I've got the rocks low poly um, selected. What I want to do with this is go to the modifiers and add. Oh, yeah, there's two ways. Okay, let's go to the sculpt mode, sculpting, and uh, let's talk about uh, why the remesh isn't so good. In fact, it's more apparent for the tree. Um, let's try it here anyway. Remesh. We'll go to point one and see what happens. Oh, pressed it a couple of times, and we know what happens. It crashed my computer. Do you know that's not actually that bad? <laughs> so it might work for this, and the reason it works for this is because it's kind of um, the remesh. If I go front view, it goes exactly in line with. Um, your axes, so the Z and the Y, the global coordinates. So if I rotate this, it will still be in line and it will go um, diagonally across your mesh. Um, so that in this set, sense, it's kind of good and it's kind of working. What sort of poly count we got there? I mean, we got 7,000 faces, which is a bit high um, because we want to unwrap this and be able to paint on it. So I probably need to go a little bit lower. So let's go 0.15. Okay, and now we're on 3,000 faces. So that's the same as my tree. Uh, much cleaner topology. It's pretty nice. Uh, let's see, though, how close we are to our high poly. So if I bring the high poly back, you can see that the high poly is kind of sticking out in areas. And it's not very close, uh, which could be problematic. Um, now, a better way... Um, it's... <laughs> Just having a look. Oh yeah, so what you've been doing in ZBrush, or ZBrush. <laughs> um, so a better way of doing this, um, so if I, um, I'll just delete this actually and then do the process again. So I'll go back to Layout, delete that one, and copy the High Poly again. So Shift D, left click, and this is gonna be called Low Poly. So back to the start. A better way, in my opinion, is the Decimate modifier. We'll hide the High Poly again. So hide, hide high poly so you can see what's happening with the modifier. The decimate is under deform, isn't it? No, nope, it's under generate. Oh, I suppose it's generate in English. Uh, decimate. And now we have this slider. It's because it's two million faces. If I drag this slider, it, there's loads of delay as it's trying to work it out. So what you end up having to do <coughs> after you wait for the crash. Do, 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 I'll look at any questions? <laughs> Um, use a cage, yep, um, cages are the best way to do baking. <coughs> Excuse me, there we go. <laughs> Zed brush, indeed. Um, but uh, sometimes it's it's the longer process, so if you can get a good bait without a cage, um, then I'm not saying it's better. <laughs> snow, you've got snow in Croatia. Thank you very much, Milan. I'm just <laughs> a little bit surprised that you've got snow. First snow? Is that really? In Croatia? Wow. It just seems uh, Ooh, so, well, because we're, we've you, hit springtime much. and everything's getting warm. <coughs> and I didn't think you were... I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, uh, I'll have to look it up later about exactly where you are and stuff. Um, any tips for the beginner? Uh, keep practicing. Start with low poly. It's always what I say, just do, 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 loads, loads, loads. Uh, and don't get despondent. Don't think of doing a massive, huge, cool character. Do low poly stuff, get good at that, understand the interface, and then um, build up the quality and detail. Okay, so we have, uh, I'll have a look at that in a second. Um, it, that We've got uh, a reduction of polys, so it's got face count of 2 million. That's weird, because it's not gone down much. What was it originally then? Oh, who knows. Um, so we can go much lower than this because you can see the details almost identical. So we can go probably 0.1 and I'll press enter. 
uh, so point one and chug 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 and <laughs> uh, it will reduce to of course an exciting live stream today isn't it it's uh, seeing a swirly blue circle it's just really rocking here I tell you put that music back on shall I <laughs> Ah, there we go. Okay, so point one, and we still hardly notice any difference, but we've lost um, loads, uh, like a million and a half um, faces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that to speed it up a bit, because once I apply it, then things will move a bit quicker. Okay, but you don't have to do this if you haven't got a potato for a computer. I'm not saying that mine's a potato, but it's it's a, it's like um, a decent spud. Uh, it's <laughs> It's three years old. I keep thinking I need to get a new one, but I know that round the corner is the RTX 3000 series. That's They're thinking of that in July, so I'm waiting for that a little bit. Do you still teach at the moment, or has Suffolk 1 closed? Suffolk 1 has closed. Hello, um, hello. Nice to see you on here. Um, uh, yeah, it's closed, uh, so all schools are closed across the country. Um, and I'm supposed to be doing online, but I only teach on Wednesday, so I'll only be going... I'll do a live stream on the Wednesday, actually, about making a game model. And that's worth pointing out. So I'll be making a, um, a tomorrow I'll be doing the competition stream. So if you want to join the competition, it's very late now, but you can get your entries in um, all of uh, today, the rest of the day, up until 12 o'clock. And I'll be doing a live stream about the competition entries and talking through those. The theme is Neon, uh, Neon City. Uh, and so I'll be doing that tomorrow. Wednesday I'll be doing a live stream about making game models. And uh, a Friday I'll be doing a live stream. I'll take a break on Thursday, probably. <laughs> Friday I'll be doing a live stream about the character making for uh, Raymond uh, the, that's a, a commission I've got at the moment so we can see, uh, let's have a look at um, the polygon count that has reduced so we're down to uh, 400,000 but we can take this further so we can add modify and we can do a decimate again um, so we'll go to point 0.1 again it should be a bit quicker this time yeah, there we go. It's much quicker. And we've got the face count there, 40,000. We can go a bit lower. I know this. it's still keeping the shape, though. And that's the important thing. Uh, I'm going to actually apply this so you can see what it's doing each time. But you don't need to apply it. Um, have I tried Quixel Mixer? I keep meaning to try it. Uh, how to do fog in Blender? We'll come to that later. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll get sent a new one soon, yeah. <laughs> Spiky Dante. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do another decimal modifier. I'm just sort of, uh, you don't, you can just do it in one. You can do 0 0.001 for um, this ratio, but I'm doing it in stages because then you can kind of see what happens uh, because I can go into edit mode and you can see it. Um, you could always uh, also quad remesh and shrink wrap. Yes, you could, um, but the decimal, which I'll explain in a second, does a better job. Um, so I'll go point 0.1 again. Now we're down to 4,000 faces. Okay, so we're getting somewhere, but it's still keeping its shape. So I'm going to apply that so you can see what's going on again. So 4,000 faces, and the point being that the decimate will keep these details. Can you see it's got more detail uh, where there's a cut in the geometry, uh, whereas something like the quad remesher will be quads everywhere. Um, so we'll lose those cuts in these areas. So that's why I'm using the decimate, because... Um, it will find the corners uh, and keep to them. So if I bring that back the high poly now, can you remember the other one, uh, which was the remesh, had about, was it about 4,000 faces or something, but it was lumping all over the place. Whereas this, if we, if we go on and off with the high poly, and the point being we are trying to get, mimic the shape as closely as possible, and this is overlapping really nicely. Uh, the question is, can we go in, can, how low can we go? <laughs> it's the question. Uh, what is a good hot drink to have while doing 3D? Oh, now that's a good question. <laughs> um, uh, Bovril. <laughs> I'm trying to think of the most obscure drink I can think of. Uh, so let's see. Uh, let's add another decimate. Now, I'm in edit mode, so we won't be able to see anything. So let's uh, we'll actually be able to drag this down. I'm going to uh, lower and lower. Now, I'm starting to lose the shape around here, I would say. It depends, again, how um, what what the output is. So you could use this for games. It's a bit naughty uh, because it's really bad topology and you should be retopologizing properly and you'll get better results. Um, <laughs> it's a, uh, triangles are not bad. Triangles, everything ends up in triangles anyway. The reason you want to use quads is that it's easy to model with. 
uh, and that's the only reason because everything gets converted to triangles when it goes into engine or when it's rendered <laughs> thanks so you've got coffee apple tea uh, that they have in turkey do you know uh, seriously though is coffee or tea a good thing to do or to drink whilst doing 3D. I'm not sure it is because you get a bit of a spike in your energy levels, but then you get a downer. Um, so I don't actually drink caffeine because of that reason. I like to be nice and level um, all the time in terms of energy levels. <laughs> but let's not talk about that too much more. Villain chai tea. <laughs> Do you mean vanilla? I think that's an autocorrect thing there. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Um, in this case, our output is to try and make some beautiful 3D art. So I'm not too concerned about the poly count, but I can't use four million faces because when I try to unwrap that and uh, uh, work on it when painting, it'll just crash. Uh, so we can't do that. Um, so we need to reduce that in some way. But in this case, I would say uh, we can probably keep reasonably high, maybe around 3,000. We could go all the way to 4,000, but I think here we're not losing too much detail. Um, look at the silhouette, look around the edges and see where we start losing it, probably around here. So I think we can go to about 3000 and apply that and we've got a decent uh, unwrap. Unwrap? Not an unwrap, uh, remesh. Now there are issues with this process. <laughs> I don't drink coffee in the mor morning, no. Um, <laughs> interest and motivation are what keeps us going, that's quite right, Sandeep Bahira. <laughs> so um, there are issues now if you see in there there's really tight thin triangles and we don't ideally want that so what I do is I shade smooth and then I look for any anom anom anomalies so anything where there's a really sort of sharp spiky line now so in here there's a sort of sharp line so we know there's going to be an issue so I'll go to that vertices vertex <laughs> always do that that vertices doesn't make sense uh, vodka and blender apparently that's a great combination <laughs> um, uh, make sure that I've got this option thing open and auto merge on and then I can press GG so GG and slide it to one of the other verts and you can see then oh I've got proportion edit on that it joins together so that's the auto merge tool I could see one in here as well look at that for a really sharp um, edge so I can see it from here it's a bit too much not necessary so I can just GG and slide that in and now we've got a bit of a weird one. Now, occasionally you get, <laughs> um, I'm probably going way too deep for some people. I, well, people are watching, so it can't be too bad. GG, GG for edge slide. Um, so this is a bit of an issue where you get really sort of deep cuts like this and then spiky bits up the top. And we might want to sort this out. And you can just do a cut from one to the other like this. And then we can grab that vertices Vertex, God dear Grant, what's wrong with you? And just pull it out slightly. You don't want really deep cuts. Can you see there's a deep crevice there and it's creating shading anomalies and that might cause us problems later. So we GG that and GG this one and we just tidy up our mesh a bit. So it's not too bad now. Ooh, what's going on with my mouse? There we go. Uh, so around here, GG and just tidy things up so there's no sharp corners. That's not too bad. And just look around. So I'm looking around, is there any in there? I mean, that's a bit unnecessary, GG. And you don't want to spend too long on this. So that one there, way too thin, and we don't want that. And this one here, don't want that. Okay, so just going around, tidying this up. That one there, can you see that sort of spiky, sticky out bit and that shading, uh, that will just be a bit of a pain. Um, I might leave one in somewhere so we can see what it's gonna do. This one is a bit of a pain in here. Look, it's got, um, so if I zoom in on that, uh, it's got this one in here, which is just pointless. And that will come out when we bake. So uh, fairly large gaps. You don't need all these crevices. Uh, in this case, it's probably not too bad. I'll move this one though, GG. GG, GG, GG. This one, GG. See, I'm used to it, so I know what they look like. But um, if you go into um, smooth shading like this, you can see that there's a sort of sharp line there. So there's some sort of shading anomaly there. And we'll get rid of those. Okay, so you go around just tidying up a bit. It's much quicker than doing a huge um, sort of uh, retopology exercise going all around it. Um, is that making sense? 
Um, I was thinking about how to do this last night with poor results. <laughs> Um, but it's it's good stuff. Is this making sense? I'm hoping it's making sense. Uh, what am I currently making? So if you look at the thumbnail, that's what we're working on. And um, I'm going from the high poly, which looks like that. And uh, at the moment, here's our low poly. And that's what it looks like. But we will get it to look exactly like this, but only be 3,000 faces. Oh, the magic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> don't know what I was doing there. Uh, so aiming for more of a convex hull type arrangement. I'm not sure I completely understand. <laughs> uh, will you have to merge by, oh, I suppose you could merge by distance. Um, sometimes if they're really, oh, hang on, I've just done that. Oh, that's right. Um, sometimes if it's uh, really long thin triangles, then it doesn't quite um, tidy it up. And sometimes you want these dents maybe you want a dent in there well actually that's a rubbish dent so again <laughs> uh, but you might want that sort of detail so um, i prefer just to go around i mean you could do that you could select all alt m by distance and then just uh, move this up slightly can you see that one disappeared there so i'll go down and you can see that's the problem you see I, do i want that probably i probably do you see so if i go in here i actually want the one that's sticking out more because you want the low poly to be really slightly outside the low, um, the high poly. Could you do a clay texture on that? Uh, maybe uh, when we get to the texturing bit, I'll, we'll, we'll have a more of a chat about that and what we're going to do. So it's a bit of a mess in here. Um, that That's the sort of one you definitely don't want. So I'll slide that along, slide that one along. And we might have to tidy some of these up. That one's a bit too close. That one's a bit too close. And I think we've tidied that up reasonably well. It's not too bad. I mean, you could spend ages doing this. These ones look a little bit weird. I'm going to just... Oh, oh. I'm going to just do that. Oh, now that is interesting because I'm pressing GG for edge slide. And now it's going... Oh, that was just being a bit weird. But probably user error. So I'm just going around tidying a few of these up. And this is a way you can reduce polys as well. Oh, that's a dreadful one in there. Look at that. Can't even hardly get it, but I can just get that out, get that out. Get out of here. And some of these, I'll probably tidy that one up as well. So yeah, it just uh, making sure you keep an eye on the silhouette. So every now and again, you might want to bring back your high poly and think, oh, are we matching up? So it's lost a bit of, of its... Um, shape there but we can sort that out with ray distance because the rays will push out so when you think about it um all the you know normals are pointing in a certain direction that's where the rays are being cast so looking for the high poly to map and think about where the light is coming from hopefully it's all making sense I mean, as i'm talking i'm thinking kill this is actually really really complicated stuff but let me know if you're still with me um it's, it's quite advanced uh, stuff we're doing at the moment it's not a simple process i probably should have put um advanced on the um, the thing me jiggy, what do you call it? The thumbnail. But hopefully, uh, you're here for the entertainment <laughs> if you're a beginner. Uh, but I suppose you might be looking at this thinking, oh, so that's the process, is it? Um, I don't quite understand it, but uh, when I come to, because that's the thing, uh, there'll be things always when you're a beginner uh, and you won't understand. There's things I look at, like I was looking at nodes the other day. Who is it, the chap who does nodes out of nothing and produces stupid stuff? Uh, and I was thinking, and he was talking maths, and I was thinking, uh, um, <laughs> so it was really hard to get. But I still thought it was important to watch at least the first 10 minutes, uh, a, a bit of it. I watched a fair bit of it and thought, this is really tough. But maybe the next time I watch it, I'll think, oh, yeah, because he said that earlier. And, uh, and I'll watch it again. And then the next time, and then I'll see someone else mention something that he says. It's like learning a language. You slowly pick up the words and the meanings. Um, through repetition. Oh, there's a dreadful one in there, isn't there? Can't even see it. There we go. Tidy that up nicely. When I say nicely, it's not particularly nice, is it? There we go. So just a bit more tidying up and then I'll uh, move on. So I don't want it looking completely sloppy, but I don't have to spend hours on it. That's why I did the tree one first, uh, because I thought doing two of these would be dull as dishwater. But do remember to wash your hands. Not that we're going to talk about that, are we? <laughs> uh, Unreal Engine or Unity 3D? Um, 
Uh, yeah, the entire workflow is on Blender. Sorry, I'm just uh, seeing that lots of people asked a few questions there. So I'm just answering a few. I'll just push these in. Um, make an animation exercise series just like Node School and Modeling. Yeah, I sort of did that with animation. There's a playlist and you can check it out. Um, but um, it's slightly different, but maybe I'll do that. Um, I'm not brilliant at animation, but then I, I suppose I'm not brilliant at anything, really. It depends what you call brilliant, isn't it? Um, so um, it, there's, I've probably got something to offer with animation. Um, what were we talking about? Um, yes, the entire fl workflow will be on Blender. Oh, there are two Discord invite, invite links. Well, uh, one will work, one probably won't. <laughs> uh, I meant to get rid of one, but I obviously forgot. They might both work, actually. Because I, I panicked the other day when people were saying, oh, I can't get on Discord. And then I probably, there probably was a link there all along. And it was fine. Okay, we're getting there, aren't we? So just into smooth shading. Check there's no really sharp lines. I might have just butchered that one. There we go, there's one. Oh, there's some nasty ones here as well. Nasty ones. Oh, nasty. There we go. Have a look around. There's one obviously there. And the other ones should be all fine, generally speaking. Yep, just having a wander around. Do, 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 going out for a stroll on the rock. And this is an interesting one. Where do I put it? Because it sort of triangulates all over the place. Probably to that one. <laughs> Okay, we're there, we're ready to go. All right? Okay, it's very exciting, isn't it? Okay, so the next stage, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm starting to think this is a bad idea because I'm just thinking this is horrendous uh, workflow, isn't it? But I'm so used to it that it seems normal to me. Uh, and then I, as I'm explaining, I'm thinking, God, but will they understand what that means? Will they understand? No. It's, let me know if you're struggling. Uh, we'll get on to the more slight, slightly more interesting stuff later on. And maybe when you see the results, you'll think, oh, actually, that's worth learning because it is pretty cool. It's got to be said, um, if I say so myself. Just going to tie those ones up. Right. Um, so I've got a low poly and I've got my high poly. Bring back the high poly. There it is. Overlapping just about. Um, yep, yeah, it's reasonably good. Uh, and the low poly is... Where are our faces? Just under 3,000, so that's pretty good. Uh, I mean, again, you could possibly go for a, a game model that was like this if this was only a few of these in the game or something, possibly. Um, so high poly. Now what we do then is go to the UV editing workspace. Well, there's my little plant thing I was doing earlier. Um, and we need to unwrap our low poly. So rocks low poly up the top here, you will see that. And uh, I'm gonna unwrap the easy way, which is select all U, pressing U and then Smart UV Project. This is the uh, naughty way to do it. You can see why it's naughty because, to be fair, that's not a bad unwrap. I'm pressing Control Spacebar, by the way, to go to full screen. But you do need to check. Just have a quick look. Make sure nothing's overlapping itself, which does sometimes happen even with unwrap. Oh, there is actually a really cool plugin, isn't there? Oh, look, there's one. Just, uh, just move them out of the way so they don't unwrap, overlap like that. Usually you can spot them. Uh, if you just have a quick look around, but there is a plugin I'm sure that tells you what's overlapping and what isn't. So just a quick look around, making sure there's no overlap. I'll just go across the middle like this first. That looks like a naughty area. That, that'll be alright. That'll be alright. Just having a quick look around. Quick look around. Can't see any overlaps. Let me know if you see any overlap, people. <laughs> uh, I'm just thinking this is probably going to be the most boringest. I mean, but there's more people on. It's, 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 the numbers are growing. <laughs> I did see that, um, yeah, so um, I moved the competition results, which was supposed to be today, um, but I moved it. I did say this right at the beginning of the competition that I'd move it to Tuesday because of Blender Today and how they are now. Um, they were doing it on Monday, weren't they? So I didn't want to. Uh, get in their way. I know that's a bit annoying because they're really close to each other. They shouldn't really be that close. But we should be right because I'm going to have a fairly high um, resolution texture. Now I can't see any more overlap. There was just that one 
vert that overlapped. Generally, it's done a pretty good job and we're all good. Uh, UV Packmaster, that's it. Uh, I think, actually, no, that wasn't it. Was it? Um, did they tell you? Oh, I can't remember. Uh, it's one of them that does uh, a really cool job. With, um, a UV Packmaster, there's a free version, which I never got to work. It was really frustrating, and the paid-for version looks awesome. Really, really awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, okay, so I've unwrapped. It's not amazing unwrap, but it will work. Um, so we now can um, paint on this. We could paint on it if we want to, but we want to get this information from the high poly. We want this uh, rock here looking like this rock here with all that nice crispy detail. Look at that. Okay. And that is possible. How, Grant, how can you possibly do that? Well, baking. So in order for this to work, you must be in cycles. Cycles is the only way to bake at the moment. So if I go across the cycles, uh, and recently I've found that in the past I could only use my CPU, but recently I've been able to use the GPU and it's worked nice and quickly. Yay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, will there be a poll? That's a good idea. Um, we had problems last time, didn't we, Luna Lotus, uh, where I wasn't able to see the results of the polls. We need some sort of different mechanism. Uh, maybe if you could make me some sort of poll admin. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be really cool. But it would be really great if someone were to make a poll because uh, that's that's the coolest way, I think, isn't it? Okay, uh, so we've got the high poly here. We've got the low poly. So um, we'll just hide the high poly again. On the low poly, we want to add a texture uh, in order for us to bake onto. So we press new texture here. So I've got my low poly selected, obviously. Oh. I didn't actually have my low poly selected, but I have now. So we create a new texture. Uh, this is rock norms. So normals, obviously. Uh, nice big texture, 2048 by 2048. If your computer can handle it, then um, you'll see how quickly this goes. Uh, and mine is a fourth gen i7. I mean, it's not a bad computer at the time, but it's three years old. Um, Twitter to do my poll, do you think? Is that the easy way? Hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> I wouldn't know how to do that. Um, so press OK, and that creates this black texture. It doesn't really ma matter about the color because that's all going to change. Um, so we've got that texture set up, and we've got a material. I'm going to call this low poly rock. Actually, that's just. I'm going to close that and just make sure I've got a completely new material for it low poly rock. So I just press the cross button and reopened it. Um, hopefully, that's making sense. Uh, and in here, I want to shift A, add texture, image texture. So I'm bringing in this image. So it needs to be rock norms. There's rock norms. So this is this image here. You must have it selected because Blender needs to know where am I baking this information to? And loads of, you get error messages down here and they're always, uh, it doesn't know what it's baking to is roughly what it's saying or no UVs because you haven't unwrapped your object. So your low poly has to be unwrapped and it has to have a, te a texture ready to be baked to. Okay, at that point, uh, we need to select the high poly and then the low poly last, or the low poly needs to be the active object. Now, the really irritating thing about this is I want to be able to do this. We need to be able to see both, so I've got them both visible here. I want to be able to do this in the outliner because they're on top of each other, so it's awkward to know which one you've selected. But in the outliner, you select the active object first and <laughs> any other objects last, and it's in yellow. You know it's in that bug because it's in yellow. You can see that up there, yeah? Uh, but it's a bit annoying because it's the opposite to the way you select in the viewport, and I think that's a bit naughty of them to do that. Um, have you run into that takes ages unless you set render tile size equals... I'm not sure that means... I don't think I've run into that bug, so I'm not sure. Um, so um, I've got the rock, I've got them both selected and the rock low poly is the active object, okay? Then we can go down with cycle selected into our render tab down to bake and we want to change the bake type to normals. Yep, so there's normals because we're making a normal map. And a little bit lower down here, there's selected to active. So remember, our high, um, our high poly is the selective ob selected object, our low poly is the active object. We know it's active because it's yellow and we know it's going to bake to this image here. You should be able to see that image because your active object should be the texture that's selected because it's um, the active object. Making sense? <laughs> Probably over explaining this now, aren't I? Um, oh, you can select with control click. 
yeah it's still it still um highlights it as active can i just check that oh i see that's how you make it active ah uh, gold star for you tin cisco i'm handing out gold stars that's definitely a gold star for you i like that it's nice to learn something and i didn't know about that so yeah you can make it the active object so the rock low poly can you see how the texture changes so i haven't got my texture here anymore material i should say but there's you know you've got it right uh, with a low poly selected if you've got your rock norms in there you don't need to put this rock norms into the high poly or anything like that don't worry about that the rock high poly doesn't have to have anything special about it but the rock low poly does has to have this texture there so we've got uh, selected to active ticked and then there's this thing called ray distance down here uh, and to start with put it up fairly high maybe about 0.7 and that's how far it's looking out for the high poly so again you don't have to be right on top of each other uh, they can be slightly apart and the ray distance will sort that out. If you've got a cage, you don't need a ray distance because the cage does something special, but I'm not going to talk about that. But cages are better. Uh, just having a check on the stream. Cool. Okay, so uh, making sure there's no questions, are people understanding, we're all good to go, aren't we? Okay, so now I should be able to press bake. And you know it's working because you've got this uh, dialog box here and it's going up percentage wise. Or it's not, it's just stay sticking on 0%. It might be because I've got a stream running and things, so it might be struggling. Oh, there we go. Okay, so that was a ray distance of 0.7. And let's take a look at our normal map. So control spacebar to get there. And now we've got a few anomalies. Can you see where this really sort of weird color is like this? And this. So there's a few areas. So I probably, uh, that's not too bad. We might get away with that. And there's a few things we might get away with, um, but generally speaking, we need a tidier map than this. So we need to put the ray distance up slightly. You want the ray distance as low as you can handle because the more those things uh, reach out for things, the more distorted it might become. So if it's if the low poly's here and the high poly's all the way over here, uh, then it's reaching out in rays and it might hit the wrong bit, basically. Um, so it might not look as good if your ray distance is really high. Um, you probably won't notice it, so don't panic about putting this up quite high. So I'm going to go to 0.85 uh, and then bake again. So just baking again, uh, control spacebar. You can actually do a few things whilst baking, but just be a bit careful. Your computer might chug a bit. Just having a look at the... any questions? Yeah, I think it... big tricky. It is quite a complicated process and other programs uh, seem to do it better, don't they? Um, but I quite like Blender for the fact that uh, it had it breaks everything down. So let's say you took this into Substance Painter to do your baking, uh, and you didn't know about baking, you'd just end up with these anomalies, and it would look rubbish. Um, whereas in Blender, you've got so many little things and parameters you can figure it out. So that's quite good about Blender, but it is a long process. So you've still got these anomalies. Now what you can do um, is go into edit mode with ah, I just killed it <laughs> probably ought to save my work shouldn't I uh, let's go out of edit mode because it's trying to look at my it, it, my computer impressed me there it managed to look at this million faced rock in high poly so I'll hide that I'm just going to go into here and look at my maps and see where these anomalies are so I'm going to click on them I've got this button selected so when I select them I can then press full stop on my numpad to get to that point. So there we go, it's in this area. And I don't think I can get that much tidier, but if I look at my high poly, there's a bit of distance between them. It's more than like, it's not as bad as I'd expect, actually. I would have thought that would be really bad. But that, that one there, let's full stop. Yeah, it's in this sort of crevice here, isn't it? So the easy way to sort that out, if I say it's easy, just pull it out really slightly. Let's get that one as well pull it out and make sure it's uh, so if the low poly is if the high poly is coming through you try and get the low poly so it's sticking uh, so it's past the high poly so you can't see the high poly um, maybe that makes sense the high poly is the one that's sort of a darker gray uh, that might have fixed it we'll see uh, it probably won't matter too much in that tiny crevice there let's have a look around for any more of those anomalies it was just there really, wasn't it? So I've probably fixed it now. So let's uh, go back to baking. Uh, 
make sure I've got my rock high poly selected, but uh, make sure the rock low poly is the active object. Is there ever a reason you want to bake with a cage? Yes, this would be much easier with a cage. Uh, so I don't want to go through the cage process because it takes longer, um, but it gives you accurate results all the time, generally speaking, unless, unless you mess it up, obviously. Uh, so let's bake that again. Hopefully we'll get slightly less anomalies this time. Oh, did you see that? I touched my face. Don't touch your face. It's naughty. <laughs> Not that we're going to talk about that. <laughs> Uh, would shrink wrap help here? Possibly. Oh, I just touched my face again. <laughs> it possibly would, yeah. Uh, but you need to pull it all outside in order to shrink wrap it. It could possibly... <laughs> it could possibly help. Uh, but again, it's a longer process. Um, yeah. Uh, happy your normals bit bite be inverted. Might be inverted. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's have a look. I mean, there's, there's a few tiny little glitches here. There's one there. I, w I would like to see where that is. So I'm gonna. Oh, I've done it again, haven't I? Gone into edit mode whilst the high poly selected. Yeah, I'm gonna find that one <laughs> and get rid of it. Oh, that's not as bad as I'd expect. Oh, it's. Oh, yeah, it is actually. So I was right close. So I'm just gonna get rid of that. I don't need that. And that one as well. Okay. And do you know that one is pointless? Right, this time, this time. So it seems like a long process, and um, you don't have to worry. I'm trying to get the best normal map because I'm doing a live stream and I want people to be impressed with my work. But um, you'd probably get away with more than you think in this, um, so don't panic too much. Hello, all right, man. Nice to see you. Um, what have you missed? Well, I'll I'll explain that in a second. We're just going to do another bake, and we are baking. Uh, so low poly, high poly, selected. Oh well, look, I didn't. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, low poly, high poly, and yeah, control. I see control and shift will just select things. That's interesting, but yeah, um, make sure it's yellow. That's the thing. Uh, and press bake. And this time, this time we're going to get a good bake. Full screen, because I'm confident. Let's get full screen. There it is. Any minute. There we go. It's not too bad. Uh, there's a few you. Like I say, you know you've got sort of slight glitches. It's all right if they're off to the edge here because that probably is um, the overlap. So it goes over your scenes. If I press, in fact, um, I just hide the high poly with the low poly selected. Go into edit mode. Can you see this where it goes beyond the seams? That's fine. Yeah, so a bit of anomalies there, but we're okay. I think we'll probably get away with this. So here's the magic. So uh, hide the high poly. There's the low poly. Here's what it looks like at the moment. And then we're going to plug this into our normal map. But what do we need to do? What do you always need to do with a normal map before you plug it in? Let me know. Oh, there's a gold star going for anybody that can get it. I left my study for this live stream. I hope it's good enough. <laughs> what do we need to do? What do we need to do? There's actually a couple of things. But there's one thing that gets everybody. And they say, why is it not looking great? I'll tell you why it's not looking great. And Andrew Price will definitely tell you why it's not looking great. Uh, normal map, non color data, GHP's in, you're there, you've got it, gold star for you. <laughs> you do need to obviously as well add a normal map node, yes, I'll give you that panboy 2k, you can have, um, oh no, a big tricky, you've got there first with that one as well. So we'll go there, vector, and I'm going to make a mistake here, so I put my vector in, color to the color, normal to the normal. Oh, yes, but what's going on? It's not looking great. So we go non-color data down here. Oh, that's weird. It's not letting me go. No. Ah, do you know why it's not letting me change the color space? Anybody know? Let me know. What do you think? You were close. <laughs> it's a great kid. Um, so uh, what have I done? Why can I not change the color space to non-color data? Yeah, glitches would be more catastrophic in an animated model. Depends on where they are. If you've got a glitch stripe right under the arm and he's always going to be doing this, then yes. So you can get away with a few things. And in this one, I might even show you some really naughty stuff. Yeah, exactly. I haven't saved it. Who got there first? Oh, GHP Zen, you have got there again. Maybe you've got a really fast connection or something and you're beating everybody. Uh, but yeah, you know your stuff. So save and work. Uh, save as. 
and I've done, you can see my tree ones there, uh, tree cav, tree norms, uh, there's the dreadful concept art, <laughs> and this is uh, rock norms, save. Okay, um, so now I can change it to non-color data. Let's see, and it did look a heck of a lot better, didn't it? There's a few glitches here, can you see? That's where our normals didn't look great, and down here. Now, you can be really naughty. Should I, should I even tell you? Should I even tell you? Uh, the thing is, uh, I, I did a tutorial on this once, and someone said, you never, ever should do that. And in my opinion, uh, you do what you do, to get great results in your artwork and if you need and if you need to save loads of time like um, now I've got to go back find these areas adjust them try and get them to work maybe add some topology um, so they do work that's the best way to do it there's a cheat way let's go to texture paint mode oh did he say that did he really say that he's gonna he's gonna paint his normal map he is he's gonna do it oh right so we're going here and uh, in texture paint mode we've got our rock normals there why is it not actually? Oh, right. But we need to actually, I mean, this isn't the best way of doing it, is it? Oh, 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 not that. Let's bring down, why can I not create the window now? There we go. Um, just move that into position and change this to the shader editor. Now, I was expecting this to show my normals. Let me just go back in. Oh, that's interesting. It's not showing, maybe they don't want you to do <laughs> paint on normal but yeah I'm clicking on it maybe it, okay I'm just gonna go straight into the color then dun dun he's painting on his normal map he's gonna do it it's it's really naughty because it doesn't it doesn't do that well uh, and this is probably a glitch that I probably ought to go and fix pro properly you know but we can sample a color from here and then we can paint it on there let's so at our maps, what's going on? I'm gonna just unhook it from here. Hey. Oh, what am I doing? What's the, uh... it is control. Oh, control right click, I was, hang on. How do I cut them? Yeah, it is. Why was that not working? Oh, I wasn't pressing uh, with my pen, don't worry. Okay, so we've uh, sample this. And I'm painting over it in the most naughty of ways. So just tidying up like this. Oh, I've actually got a texture on and that's why it's not doing very well. Texture mask, I'll just get rid of that. There we go. Now again, uh, <laughs> you can even smear these in. It's probably the better way actually, smearing it. And it's very naughty. Very, very naughty. <laughs> You're a madman. <laughs> I'm calling the cops, don't call the cops. They're busy at the moment sorting out other issues in the world. I don't know what they are though, because we don't talk about those here. All right, here we go. Right, he's, he's only gone and done it. Oh, what's he doing? What's he doing, eh? Right, so, uh, and, I, and I'm showing you this because sometimes you just think, oh, I cannot get the perfect bake. This is really annoying, I'm gonna give up Blender. So don't give up Blender, just go in and smudge it. It won't look as good as it could do, but it will look okay, I promise. <laughs> right, okay, that's, that might look bad actually. <laughs> but the rest of it's not looking too bad. There's a glitch in here as well, isn't there? And that's what I mean about going around, trying to get those triangles uh, unhooked and things. So anyway, let's go back into the color here and off there. And that's not too bad now. It's not too bad. I mean, there's a, it's a bit all over the place, but it's not as bad as it was. So you can sort of just about fix. I mean, I probably could tidy that up even more um, by coming in here and just coming up that way. Oh, now that is actually problem. Oh, let's unhook that. Let's try again. I've got this weird thing there now. Hey, let's press N to get rid of that silly thing. And let's, I can't remember how you get rid of those things now. Okay, let's save our image anyway and take that off and there we go so you can if you're going yeah i know it's it's it is it's it's, it's naughty i know but you can do it <laughs>
the exactly big trick. If it works, it works. And if we're trying to be really quick and someone's getting upset because their normal WAPs aren't work, their normal WAPs? <laughs> you know, if your normal WAP doesn't work, then it's probably that you've spelt it wrong and it's called a normal map. <laughs> He's doing it again. <laughs> Love it. Love the comedy. Okay, so we've got, and it, this looks pretty decent, doesn't it? That's the cool thing about normal maps and baking. Look how great that sort of looks. If you don't look at those painted bits. The painted bits don't even... Look, if I go past them quickly... So you, you don't even notice. Look, you can't see it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, normal maps. And if, in fact, if I uh, go back to the shading... Well, in fact, no, no we won't... Whoa, what's going on? Let's go back to layout quickly <laughs> before that crashes. Um, yeah, it looks pretty decent, doesn't it? But wait, there's more. Wait, there's more. <laughs> what we're going to do... We're going to do a cavity map next. Yes. It looks marvellous, doesn't it? Marvellous. Uh, so. <laughs> Just having a, a little giggle at uh, the, um, the stream here. Uh, so 3K faces and normal map now. Yes. Yes. That's So, um, so 3,000 faces and a normal map is the equivalent to what we had before, which is this. So we've gone from this, which is nicely coloured, to be honest, to this. And that is the 3,000 face one with a normal map. So 2 million, or was it 3 million faces? No, 2 million faces to um, 3,000 faces, but with a normal map. And you wouldn't really notice the difference. And in fact, we can take this even further. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's a, a beautiful cake that I'm baking here. And <laughs> uh, we're we're gonna bake the um, the top layer now, which is the cavity mask. Oh, this is this is where the magic happens, and you're gonna think, "Whoa, you've changed my life, Grant. I'm glad you exist." So we've got the high poly. I'm gonna hide the low poly. Get bring back our high um, hide the low poly and bring back our high poly. I'm just <laughs> looking at some of the comments. So. Um, Let's go to shading mode. And this time we have to be in cycles for this to work again. I, I know I was saying we're in cycles anyway, uh, hence why it's taking a while to render. I'm being a bit weird. Oh, that's because there's no lights in the scene. Let's go to, that's a good point. I'm gonna have to do some world lighting. Let's just quickly do that so you can actually see what's going on. Um, I've got a volume in there and all sorts happening, but there we go. So we can see it now. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this, back to object, don't worry about what I just did there. I was just undoing something that I did earlier. The Grant Abbott Bakery. <laughs> uh, we have lots of bakery programs. You probably have them in your country, but we have really silly ones. The Great British Bake Off. Not that I've ever watched it, but it's a really popular program here. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, so we've got um, this is our high poly model. And I'm going to make this look awesome. How are you going to do that, Grant? Well, I'm just going to... I'm going to put my world back up to one. There we go. Okay. I mean, it looks awesome already because I sculpted it. <laughs> I know. I <laughs> know. But we're going to make it look even more awesome. So off to object node, and we're going to use a special, special node from my node library. No, obviously, um, it's one that Blender made. It's the pointiness node. It's really cool. So shift data add input geometry. Geometry. So it's the geometry node, but at the bottom of there, it's got pointiness. Pointiness. I'm going a bit stupid, aren't I? <laughs> let's let's sell this down just a little bit. Zoom smudged area, Grant Abbott. Uh, uh, this is the high poly. I'll do I'll do do that again in a bit. Don't you worry. It was brilliant. No one would notice that there was any issues with it. Um, right. So pointiness node into the color. Nothing will happen to start with, but don't panic. Whoa. Literally nothing's happening. Yeah, okay. Um, but what we have, this takes um, the sharp bits of your model and lightens them, and the crevices, the crevices, uh, and darkens them. That's what the pointiness does. But in order to do that and make the most of it, you need a color ramp in here. So shift A to add, converter, color ramp. Put that in there. And then now, wait for it, here's the magic. It's coming, it's coming. 
Usually it's, it's the magic number is always 0.4 and 0.6. It's weird. It just always seems to be the magic number and work. But you have to be careful. Just watch out that it doesn't go too dark. Can you see in there? That's actually a little bit too dark. So I'm going to bring that back because you can uh, take this further again. Once you've baked it, you can use a color ramp to sort of um, kick it into gear. But there, look at that. Look at that. Uh, so we've got this lovely um, highlights and crevices. If I press M to mute that, you can't really see much difference. <laughs> but I guarantee there's a difference there. Yeah, you can just about see it on the edges there. Oh, it's weirdly you can't see that particularly well. Maybe the mute isn't working properly. <laughs> I guarantee this is the most amazing thing. <laughs> you just wait. You just wait. Uh, doesn't work in Eevee. That's important to say. Uh, so uh, this node will only work in cycles, hence why I'm in cycles at the moment. If I cross, I go across the EV, you'll see that it goes all flat again. So it um, sort of disregards this node. It's weird that cycles doesn't want to get rid of the pointiness node for some reason. But yeah, um, so I was trying to mute, mute it there, but it wasn't muting. So if I do that there and then do that, I suppose we're just getting a lot of shadow. Here. But um, so now we want to get this information, this really cool color ramp, onto our low poly again so we can then uh, change it with um, color ramps and stuff and get some interesting effects going on with our low poly work. That's just a fantastic, isn't it? Isn't that just fantastic? Will you show how to export uh, the end to Unity or Unreal 4? Possibly. Possibly. I mean, it's not really um, a game engine thing, this, but it will work, so we'll do it. Uh, we'll do it. <laughs> Okay, so um, I'm in cycles and I've got the high poly and the high poly now has a material. I'm going to call it rock high poly material. So it's important to understand that we have actually changed the material of the high poly and we want to bake the information from that material onto the texture on the low poly. Okay, <laughs> hopefully this is all making sense. Uh, so we need to bring back our low poly. And we need this one selected, but we need a new map to bake to. So let's go back to the UV editing mode. I find that a bit easier. And we're going to create a new map. And we're going to call this Rock Cav for cavity. OK, press OK. We don't need the alpha, by the way. I um, should have said we don't bother with the alpha because it's not got any transparencies. Um, yes, uh, that would, that's a good point. That's what I should have done. Thank you, GHP Zin. I should have used the... Um, yeah, and I will do that in a second, actually, because that will help us. Um, right. So at the moment, we've got our normal... I can't remember how you get rid of these things. How do you get rid of those little thingies? <laughs> I'm just going to delete it all and hook it up again. That was annoying me. Um, pointiness. So uh, the pointiness, uh, cavities, it darkens, and edges, it highlights, so it makes them lighter. Uh, lights and darks. You'll see the cavity map in a second and you'll see what it's doing. It's just so good. Okay, so we've got our rock cavity map here. Um, so let's, uh, I'm going to up the ray distance a little bit so we can maybe get rid of a few anomalies. I'll just go all the way to one actually and we'll see if that affects it um, a bit better. So um, high poly first, uh, rock low poly last, but um, the rock low poly has to be orange. So if you're selecting the outliner, control click as I'm being told, on the rock low poly, and that will get there. Um, the last thing we need, though, we're in the low poly rock material, but we haven't got anything to bake to, so make sure you haven't got the rock norms selected, otherwise it will write over the rock norms. Even though the cavity's visible here, we need it selected in here. So we, I'll just duplicate this one, and then change it to rock cav. And we can change the workspace to non-color data at this point, because it is black and white data. Um, okay, so we want it to bake onto there. Um, we're all set up except we've got bake type to normal. Uh, now, if I look at the high poly a second, um, it's going into the um, base color, and you can set this to diffuse. There's a better way. If you're, if you're worried about what I'm doing in a moment, just set it to diffuse and make sure you've got uh, just color enabled. Okay, pretty much the same thing. But occasionally it glitches. Uh, because it's the principal BSDF and it's thinking, well, what's the diffuse? And you can change this for a diffuse if you want, or you can just press Control, Shift, click to bring it 
go into the admitter node or the viewer node, which is basically an emission of one, so it's an emitter node, um, and change this to emit. So we're baking the emission, and there's the emission. You must have the node wrangler installed for that to work. Edit, preferences, add-ons, type in node wrangler, make sure it's ticked. You need to do that in your life, even if you don't use Blender, make sure you've ticked node wrangler. Hmm, interesting. I don't know about that, Laura TG Gamer. Interesting. So is the process the one to make textures from materials? Yeah, yeah, it's the same sort of thing. Yeah, um, it's slightly different in this case because we're taking from the high poly to the low poly. Um, so we've got that emission node. So we can actually see what that looks like with the... Oh, no, we can't because we're in cycles. So we're in um, look dev there. So this is what it looks like with through the emission node after a few minutes. So you can see that cavity. So you can see the, the crevices. And that, actually, I can then mess with my... That's better. I should have gone through the emission node earlier. So I can look at this a bit more. Maybe bring up the blacks slightly. If I bring the blacks up, you can see that that cavity getting stronger. Well, go past five and it sort of kills it. Because that's over halfway. But you can go right to there. But the blacks are really black, so you don't have much to play with then. But you want to try and get where... Can you see where these dots here are just a bit too black? We'll tidy those up in a bit as well. Um, but it's probably to about 0.37. I think that's where I was anyway. And then you can see the whites changing things here. But usually that is nice at 0.6. Around there. So you can see what it's doing. It's creating this cavities and peaks with the white. Okay. And that's what we're baking onto our low poly. Did the stream die? Oh. Uh, is everybody okay? Because it's all right my end, it's saying it's fine. It might have been a YouTube thing for once, rather than my internet <laughs> for once. Okay, so uh, so I've just been going through the pointiness node, if for some reason the stream... Uh, that's weird, isn't it? It just froze. But we seem to be okay. Just quickly check. doing a speed test yeah my speed's normal so I think it must have just been a YouTube glitch so we're all good um, okay so I was just going through the fact that did I um, did you see uh, that uh, me plugging into the emission so I can do that with the node wrangler go into the emission like that and I'm on the high poly at the moment hopefully that's okay and just make just let me know that um, everybody's up to date and knows what I'm doing here hopefully um, all going well. Yep, all good. Okay, so I want to take this emitter node, this this emission information. So I've got the bake type emit. So I'm just kind of going through that again. I've turned my ray distance right up to maximum. Okay, uh, so uh, rock low poly, let's bring that back and make sure it's the active object. So again, I see my material in here. There's my cavity texture that I want to bake to. So I should be able to press bake now. Just, let's just check. Bake, emit, yep. And let's bake. Oh, now, object rocks LP is not enabled for rendering. That's a weird one. Uh, I'm not actually sure what that means, but occasionally, if you just do things like unplug the normals, make sure it's happy, uh, go back to the rock HP, uh, make sure you're in. Um, I'll just untick that so it's not confusing it. So it's really simple going from there to there to there. Should be fine. Um, yeah, we should be okay there. I mean, it might be that it's trying to, but we'll, we'll check. So back to rock HP, rock LP, make sure we're there. Uh, might, did I have my texture selected? Perhaps I didn't. Okay, so make sure that's selected, that we're definitely going to that. Bake. Oh, it's being red. Okay, so let's try going to look dev here and then try baking again. Ah, that's interesting. I'm not sure what that is. Anybody, any ideas? <laughs> Yeah, Blender's on at the moment as well. It's now started, hasn't it? Which is frustrating because uh, they decided to do it every day uh, exactly the same time that I do it. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of doing my streams early. Would that help people if I went from, let's say, 2 to 4? And then they'll do it from 4, obviously. Uh, this is GMT, 4 till 6, I think they go. Well, they do about an hour, don't they? But we've got to figure out why this is not working first. So let's just make sure... Yeah, maybe come out of edit mode. I don't think that would make much difference. Shouldn't do. It was working earlier in edit mode. Now this is the problem you sometimes get. 
and uh, uh, so yes for going a bit earlier yeah um, and it's really strange it just glitches out and I'll, I'll save my work quickly um, in case oh where's my mouse gone um, just quickly save and it might just be a case of reloading it uh, it's weird like that and you'd be surprised I turned off render for the collection ah uh, yeah now that, that should be let's just check yeah look there we go rock slow poly was not being rendered and that might make a difference might do let's try that and so rock high poly rock low poly make sure that texture selected rock cap yeah that's fine bake weird isn't it even though it worked earlier and I had that off it's not it wasn't working this time it's very strange how these things work probably because the normals doesn't rely on the render side of things whereas the cavity does uh, hopefully that makes sense so well done for that uh, who gets a gold star there what was it um, who said it uh, yeah so that's blaze is it blaze pronouncing that right you've got a gold star well done congratulations I'll come into what we're making in just a moment because you'll see that in f its full glory it's gonna be amazing and you'll think wow did you really make that yourself Grant or did you take a photo no I made it myself honestly governor so is it oh there we go here's our cavity mask so um, it's called a cavity mask sometimes um, any glitches looking pretty good isn't it and you can sort of see the rocky detail oh yes rock on <laughs> don't make dad jokes there's a bit of a glitch in here but you hardly notice that and there's some weird anomalies here but again we'll get away with that <laughs> we'll get away with that don't you worry get away with that <laughs> no problem okay so uh, back to full screen mode let's hide our rock high poly and we can turn off the render as well if you don't know how to get the render things up, there's the filter thing there, and you get the render tool, uh, so you know where the things are rendered. So we can get rid of that. Now, if I just plug this straight into the base color, you'll see what it does. Ta-da, we've got a rock cavity, and it looks all right. It looks a bit weird, and then we plug the normals in as well. And now that looks pretty decent. It looks uh, amazing. <laughs> so we've got, oh, thank you very much, David J. Um, I'm loving your nodes for noobs tutorials. Thank you very much. I'm glad you're enjoying them. Uh, I wasn't sure whether people are enjoying that because the views have gone down, but I think that might be in general. I was talking to other creators the other day and they were saying views are down in general. So uh, maybe it's just the, the general YouTube thing. Ooh, so we're well, all okay. Thank you. So very I appreciate much. The, uh, the donation. That helps me. <laughs> it helps me because my views are down. Uh, so I think there was a glitch in there, but I mean, that's hardly noticeable, is it? And generally, this is looking pretty amazing, isn't it? amazing thank you jason <laughs> jfr it's sort of like a, a sickly shocked face so hopefully you haven't got any viruses <laughs> okay so it's looking pretty cool but there's more we can do but wait there's more for only 9.95 sorry uh, uh, you will be able to uh, get a beautiful uh height maps now uh height maps yes this I mean, normal maps sometimes called a height map, but a proper height map is a displacement map. And uh, then you need more topology. You need a better unwrap so that you can do a subdivision surface on it that you can use that topology. So um, we've, we've done the normal map earlier, uh, and that's kind of like a height map. And I think it's uh, looking pretty, pretty good uh, for what we've got. Okay, so uh, Imre Faket, uh, nice to see you. Greetings from Hungary, lovely. Uh, technically, you can use this as a height map. Yes, that's a good point. Uh, and uh, and you, you'll be surprised you can get away with it. You can use it as a roughness map. You can use it for all sorts, actually. And we're going to use it for all sorts. Let's save it first. Save your work. <laughs> uh, save as. Uh, rock Cav. Okay. Uh, so we're almost there, ready to sort of get into the painting mode. It, Like I say, um, I, I usually do this in about... 15 minutes uh, and I think it's taken me yeah over an hour <laughs> but you get used to it but it's a complicated process to figure out what's going on um, it helped actually that I've turned the ray distance up to one so um, that can sort of solve a lot of problems as well um, yeah to be honest uh, if you've got textures that have height maps uh, that you probably plug them into a displacement I'll go through that in the next session of nodes for noobs nodes for noobs uh, which will probably be 
I'm, I'm trying to do a hard surface one, but if I can't think of anything to make a hard surface, then I'll probably do another Nodes for Noobs, maybe on Thursday. All going well. Okay, so let's think about colouring this. Sorry, there's a fly on my face. Um, yes, I am going to do a video about publishing to Sketchfab because Spe Sketchfab actually asked me for this um, and they said, can you, they would sponsor a video. I was thinking well, I was going to do that anyway. Don't tell them. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Sketchfab is really great. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Not a shout out for them, but it is really great. So I do want to talk about that. And I, I'm going to do a talk of also about selling your models online, which I think is really useful. And yeah, so there's lots of that to come. Don't you worry. <laughs> so is this pointing must be irritating. No, it's all right. It's not, it's not irritating at all. You love it. Pointy, pointy. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we can do with this color now, we've got this rock cavity, which is going to be great. Um, and we're going to um, plug it in. So shift A to add. And we're going to color... Um, plug it into I mean there's several ways of doing this um, but we can plug it into a uh, color I'm thinking which one now we'll do a color ramp converter color ramp and plug that in okay so at the moment it's just the the map at the moment you could make it darker if you wanted to sort of uh, really go for it in terms of I don't know it looks almost metallic like that doesn't it I'm gonna bring the roughness down because these rocks are gonna be um, around there but we yeah that's a good point actually let's do that so shift D to duplicate gonna bring that up here and bring another color ramp down here shift D and I'm gonna plug this into here so this is what the color ramps doing literally that so I pressed control shift left click with the node wrangler installed and you can see what it's doing so that's the color ramp so it brings up the blacks or brings down the whites or brings in the whites so up the whites in a sense um, so we can do this now, if I uh, then want to make some roughness, so uh, let's say these, uh, let's get, bring back the principal BSDF. So these edges, for example, they should, could be a bit shinier, can they? Because they're right on the edge of the rock, so they, um, the wind and rain hits them and they make them a little bit smoother and shinier. So we could do a bit of that. So we can plug this one. I'm just going to sort my nodes out a bit. So uh, let's bring this normals down here out the way, right out the way there. And then we've got a bit more to play with here. I'm going to bring the roughness down here. And this is going to go into the roughness for now. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Uh, with And notice that now I can actually turn off cycles. So let's go to the render. Let's go up to the top and turn off cycles. Uh, and when I go to rendered, it's still there. In cycles. <laughs> go back to Eevee. There we go. It's still there. <laughs> Not meant to do that. Uh, so uh, because we've baked it out, we've now got uh, the pointiness node. We don't need to rely on cycles for it. We've got it in Eevee. So it's looking, it's kind of interesting at the moment. But um, the black bits are shiny. So these crevices are shiny, but the edges are um, uh, rough. And actually, we need to turn this around. There's an easy way to do that. Um, so the crevices and the highlights, we want to turn them around. There's flip color ramp. And... Why the heck did that not work? <laughs> What's going on here? Come on, you. That's interesting. Oh, it did work. It did work. It just it was a bit weird. Don't want too much shininess. And actually, I want a fair bit of roughness. So just a bit of shininess on the edge there. Can we see it? I mean, there's hardly any there, is it? Let's try and bring that white up a little bit more. It could be my HDRI, though, so... Um, but you can see if I bring this right in, then you can start to see it on the edge. And I don't want to go that far, really. I mean, this cavity map looks a bit weird at the moment. So let's bring that down. Somewhere around there. So I'm just having a bit of a tinker and play. We're going back to the Stone Age, indeed, yes. So if you just joined us, uh, we're making um, the uh, tree over the rock. Where's the tree? There's the tree. You can see that I did all this earlier. So you can see what I've done earlier. There's my normal bake. There's my cavity map. And there's um, a special color. So I've been painting on this as well. But there's my cavity map going into an overlay. I'll show you that in a second. Um, so <laughs> it's all complicated stuff. It's all happening. Uh, so let's go back to the rock. Uh, now it's looking really gray at the moment. So we want to change the color a bit. We can... Uh, the program is pure ref, pure ref. Um, so, yeah, uh, not pure F, but pure ref. There we go. Yeah, so die has got you. 
There you go. Gold star, said I. There you go. Go gold star. Need to count up these gold stars. Oh, I think we've only got two left, haven't I? <laughs> okay, so uh, we can change the color of this color ramp. So if I change this to something like a brown, and why is that not updating? Oh, well, that's weird. What's going on? Ah, am I in low poly rock? What are you doing? What have I done there? Oh, it is. No, it was just doing it right in the crevices because that's the black, isn't it? Yeah, so in the crevices, it was a brown. <laughs> oh dear, well, there we go. So if I change the white, it's gonna have much more of an impact. So, um, oh, pinky colored rock. Looks a bit weird, doesn't it? But we don't have to worry, because it's gonna look amazing in a second. Uh, so we can change these colors and we can add colors in here. Let's say we wanted to add something in there, make it a bit darker, add another one in there somewhere. And uh, then we can change this, I don't know, give it a really ready color. Cool, that's, a, that's having a huge effect, that one. So we can pull these around, move them about, and we get sort of interesting rock formation. We can see the shine in this now, interestingly. So let's go and edit that. There we go. So you can start to see uh, what's going on there. Uh, and it's not looking too bad. Not looking too bad, it's not looking great. Uh, because it looks a bit pinky at the moment. I should really think about my color palette. Now I have got a color palette here. And I was still deciding on exactly what sort of color palette we got. Oh, you didn't. Hello, Frank. My dog's gone in the room. He's in the room. Uh, not that anybody cares. Does anybody care? Do you want to see my dog? You're going to sit down there, Frank. You're going to sit down and be nice. Luckily, he's not knocked over the green screen. All right, come on then. You're coming up. You're coming up. 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 He's not really a lap dog, so come on. Here we come. Can you see, Frank? There you are. There's my dog. I did promise the other day that I'd show my dog. <laughs> He's looking at you thinking, what the heck's going on? You can just about see him. I suppose I could put webcam on, but webcam's not great. Uh, let's see. A uh, quick intermission for the dog. I did promise a few people. There he is. Oh, look, there you are. Two shots of the dog. He's a bit camera shy, actually. He doesn't really like cameras. There you go. There you go, doggy. I feel like I give, give him a good fuss for actually, um, uh, for coming in <laughs> and getting up on my lap. There you go. There you go, Frankie. So he is a sprocker spaniel. Anyway, had enough? Had enough, Frank? I think I've had enough of me. <laughs> okay. Right, down he goes. Wee, 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 wee. <laughs> all right, he's rolling over now. He's getting all excited. All right. That will do. Oh dear, he's going to start barking in a second. So he gets really excited and playful. Uh, right, <laughs> just trying to calm him down. Let's webcam off. Let's get back to it. A new spirit. <laughs> just seeing the uh, um, all the comments. Uh, <laughs> yeah, his name is Frank. <laughs> An English Bull Terrier, cool. I'm taking a little interlude here just to see what um people are up to does he get enough exercise we were sort of in a um suburb um which is quite um countrysidey uh so we're not too bad uh so he gets out uh, we haven't gone completely isolation here i think there's going to be more, more stricter rules around along the way um but yeah there you go he's getting he's quite happy he's getting a huge fuss at the moment he's been a good dog right you better go you can go away now <laughs> okay, so where were we? We were sorting out this rock. It doesn't actually look too bad. I think it's a little bit pinky, so I'm um, inclined to change this one here away from the reds. And maybe this one here. Um, so obviously the pink colours are here, so we can move the opposite. And we could even go towards the blues if we wanted to. So this isn't making a huge amount of difference. It's right at the very end. So the very, very highlights are getting a bit of this colour. Maybe not too different and not too saturated either. I think maybe these are a little bit too saturated. So we saturated, this is saturated and this is unsaturated. So into the middle is less saturated. Uh, yeah, I, I felt like I ought to show you my dog and my wife opened the door uh, on purpose to have a bit of a joke on me because I was saying, oh, they all want to see the dog, but I'm not going to show them. And then uh, she's uh, threatened to open the door anyway. Um, so this is right in the crevices, this one. So can I go saturated there? Possibly a bit more saturated. 
Okay, so we got, it actually looks okay. I'm surprised that we got that with the color ramp. I didn't manage to do that last time with the tree so well. And I had to do some painted color onto it, which doesn't look as good at the moment. It looks a bit better with some lighting on it. I say that. Oh, that's because we're in rendered mode. We've got a HDR, oh, there we go. That's helping me a bit more to see. So what HDR have I got there? Because that's really dull, isn't it? That's a bit more like it. Okay, back to the rock. We probably need to bring these up a little bit more. And now we can really see the saturated color. So we want to come up a bit. Uh, there we go, about there. I mean, it looks a little bit sort of very stony at the moment. We can work on that. Best wife. <laughs> I'll let her know that you're uh, pleased with her. <laughs> She hardly ever gets involved. I don't even think she's subscribed to my channel. She just sort of leaves the whole YouTube thing to me. But I'll let you know. She's having to do live streaming now. She's a teacher as well. Uh, so not live streaming, but uh, sort of online things. So uh, suddenly getting into that. I keep saying she should do sort of a YouTube thing for her um, subject, yeah, which is uh, philosophy and ethics. Pretty interesting. Um, but anyway, um, right. Uh, so this is actually looking all right, isn't it? Not looking too bad. I'm quite happy with this. Now there's there's further, but, but wait, there's more, there's further we can go. So I'm gonna actually bake this out into a color that I can then paint on, okay? Because if I paint on this at the moment, it will be affected by the color ramp, it won't quite work. Uh, and if you ever get any anomalies in your um, your cavity map, you can paint those without too much issue. Um, so there's one there, there's one there, that looks horrendous, okay? So let's click on the cavity map, go to texture paint and um, Try and find that spot again. Where was it? I mean, it was out of the way, really, wasn't it? So no one would notice it. I think it was it. Where the heck is it? See, that's how unnoticeable it is. Ah, there it is. So I can then use the smudge tool on it, make sure I've got this cavity rock cav, and then just smudge that out a little bit. No one will notice. Just smudge it out. You know, no, no one's going to notice. This looks pretty horrendous, though, doesn't it? And that's not smudging well. That suggests that there's a glitch, and there's probably a vert on top of a vert. Uh, and that's, I, I wish I'd known that earlier. In fact, I mean, if I go to edit mode, let's click on that one. Oh, he's having a scratch. Uh, oh, that's probably those two a bit close to each other. This one's a bit weird. I'm just going to see where that is on my UVs. So go to UV editing, find out where that is, and see if it's overlapping something. It should be alright. It's perhaps a little bit close. Yeah, Nothing really major going on there, so I don't know why it's being weird, but look, it looks okay, doesn't it? I think we can get away with that anyway. Uh, and no one can notice it. Painting on the cavities. <laughs> um, yes, she teaches philosophy and ethics. Uh, and uh, it's sort of religious studies as well, um, but it's sort of more re uh, philosophy and ethics these days. Okay, so we've got our rock there. So I'm going to bake this out onto a, uh, a new map for um, painting on. Okay, so we're gonna create a new map. Don't change the name of that. Create a new map and it's called um, Rock Color. Okay, uh, again, same settings. Okay, and we come across to, uh, we can't do this in Eevee, so we do actually have to go back to Cycles. So let's go back to Cycles. Um, and do I need to paint it? And it's kind of looking nice in Cycles, isn't it? It's sort of working, just about, just about there. Um, there's lots more, there's way more to go, and we're going to produce this amazing piece. Right, we don't need selected to active anymore. That's weird why that was on. Oh, yeah, no, that, um, because we're not, um, yeah, <laughs> uh, because we, we were going from the high poly to the low poly, but this time we're going from the low poly um, texture to itself. It's a bit weird. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this one, and so we're going, this rock cavity has all this stuff messed with it. So we're going in here and we are changing this to rock color. Rock color, there we go. So that's the black one and make sure it's selected. Okay, so we're baking to the one we've got selected. Uh, and we want the, I suppose I'll do an emit again. So that's what the color looks like on its own without any changes. Thank you very much, uh, Jan Skov Christensen. Uh, you better make a tutorial on the lightsaber, including compositing as tutorial, since my character in the blender is waiting to hold hold it. <laughs> uh, I think there's a couple of good tutorials on the lightsaber. Uh, Flip Normals did a really good beginner series on it. So, um, smudge, what is that for? Um, smudging colors together. So in, um, I was in texture paint mode, wasn't I? And I was smudging colors like that. But I'll undo that because that's just killed it. Actually, 
it smudged this, which was interesting, which didn't matter because I had that selected. Interesting, eh? Uh, back to object mode. I don't want to mess it up, do I? Let's save and work. Just quickly save and work. <laughs> save as 18. Um, there is so many online. Yes, indeed. There are lots of lightsaber ones online. So I don't think I'll lower myself to the lightsaber people. <laughs> I do trees on rocks instead. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, sorry, you're confused. Did I um, mess things up? Don't don't worry. We're back. So um, I've got this selected and we're baking again. I'm baking the uh, in object mode. Don't worry about painting. Uh, we're back. Just forget what I just did there. I was talking about a smudge brush. Okay, so in object mode with this um, low poly selected, so rocks low poly selected. Um, and I want to go from this color information here that we can see at the moment, and I want to bake it onto a new map that then I can paint onto, okay? Uh, so rock color is selected. So I've got emit selected because it's going into an emission. This is an emission, the viewer node is an emission. And you see there, emission of one. So an emission of one just gets rid of any light information. Okay, um, I'll, I suppose I can show you uh, the diffuse is the color. Yep, so if we go diffuse and I go back to the principle of BSDF, if I turn direct and indirect off, it should be the same as the emission. It doesn't always work and it sometimes glitches when you do that, so it's better to do the emit. But I'll do it this way as well in case it's a bit confusing for you and you think, well, I'll just go for the color because I know I'm baking the color. So I click the color. Make sure color, because this, if you want the lighting information, so we can have all this lighting information as well if we want, but I don't. I just want that color. So I've got the color there. Press bake. Now that's interesting. I'm going to cancel that. Because it was baking onto a different map, which is weird, because none of them are selected, so I don't know where it was baking there, which is a slight worry. I'm going to have to go through them. So rock cav. That's all doing fine. Uh, rock norms. That's all doing fine. So we should be right. Uh, it, it probably was baking to the cavity, the rock color. But uh, I didn't see it selected, so I'm going to do that again. Bake. Okay, so we'll go to back to rock rock color here. Rock color there. It was actually baking to the rock color. I saw it there. So we're okay. Hopefully, <laughs> probably confusing people loads here. But um, it, do, do ask questions. Let me know what's going on. Uh, just, you can spend a lifetime studying trees and rocks. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like I do this. I do trees and rocks quite often. And all the time I'm thinking that could be better. <laughs> so, yeah, I totally agree. Okay, so now we've got this information onto this map here. So if I plug, but um, well, in fact, I'll do this in Eevee because it's a bit easier to see. So at the moment, we've got uh, the rock selected. I'll go back to, back to layout mode. No, I won't. There's, what am I talking about? Well, forget, scrub, forget I said that. Uh, so, yeah, in shading mode makes more sense. So you can see the rock there. So here's ro um, this my cavity map into the color map that made this cool thing here. But if I go from the color now, it should look identical. And it does, because this is just a bake of these two together. So I can actually delete these two and just have the color. Okay, so that's pretty cool already. And now I can paint on this. But there's more. There's even more. I can use my rock cavity. This is my original rock cavity. So the black and white information. And I can mix these two together. So what I'm pressing here is shift control and right click and mixing them together. That's with the Node Wrangler installed. And so this is the black and white information. And this is the color information. And I can go to the black and white or I can go to the color. Okay, so that's the factor. But if I change this to something like overlay, and overlay is quite clever. I'll zoom in a bit because you can't really see that. So there's mix nodes, uh, and there's an overlay here. Uh, so if I want to, we'll start off with uh, things people mainly understand. So something like screen or lighten is even easier. Screen is a good version of lighten. So if I want to lighten it, I can then bring this in, and it will only use the light bits to lighten it but it, it's not doing a great job. I don't like that um, because it's going across to, to white. Um, or if we want to multiply it and take the dark bits from this and darken it. 
So you can see it's taking the dark bits from this map here and darkening it. But the overlay is even cooler because it does both. The dark bits it will darken and the light bits it will lighten. So if I bring that to the color there and we bring it all the way up, why is that not working? <laughs> Uh, I'll show you that it will work because I'll bring in a color ramp. So I'll just duplicate this one. And let's try that again. Yep. So you can see, you can then, you've then got some control over the light bits and the dark bits. Although this is flipped, so I'm just going to... So bringing up the dark bits, bringing down the light bits, it doesn't seem to be working at all, does it? Oh, that's because I haven't got the factor. So there we go. Oh dear. So I can bring up the dark bits, the crevices if I want, bring down the light bits. Yeah, I was being a bit weird there, wasn't I? <laughs> Hopefully I'm making some sense. I'm surprised actually, there's a fair few people watching and Blender Today's on the other channel, as it were. Um, so things are going well. I'm quite, quite, quite impressed <laughs> with the commitment of all you guys uh, actually watching this. Um, so yeah, so this is just um, normal cavity. Uh, and if I want to uh, think, well, I want my light bits to come out more. So if I want a bit more of a stylized look, maybe I want the crevices coming in a bit more and the light bits coming out a bit more, I can always do that and give it a really sort of stylized look. It looks a bit more sort of, it's sort of a cross between stylized and realistic this though, isn't it? So that's one thing you can do. Uh, let's uh, mute this though and see what it looks like without this and with it. So it's just lightening it slightly. Can you see it's making the crevices, uh, M by the way is mute. So uh, mute will mean it will not take in the bottom um, color. It will as if those, those two are cooked up. So it's just lightening um, the highlights and darkening the crevices. Mute. It offers a bit of sharpness, basically. So I might keep that. Might not. Who knows? <laughs> oh, you understand? Oh, thank you very much, so I appreciate that. <laughs> Martin Nebulung. I don't know who that is, actually. <laughs> Just having a look at a few of the questions. Right, um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually start painting on the rock colour and see what we can do uh, to make it look more interesting. I haven't really decided what I'm doing with this actually uh, because I, I've been thinking about the tree more than anything but I might just add some colour variations to it to make it look um, yeah, a bit more fascinating. So with the rock colour um, selected, let's go to texture paint mode. Let's move this across a bit. He's just lying down now. But he might want to get out. He likes going in the garden. It's still quite sunny outside. Okay, so uh, at the moment that's what it looks like. It looks all right, but we can probably do a bit more by coming in here and maybe uh, changing some of the colors, a variety of colors. I've got um, different ones from the tree there, but we need some sort of rocky colors, maybe a bit of blue in there. So um, just see how that affects it. So that's what's going to happen. Um, but can you see, it still keeps the cavities and highlights, even though I do that. And that's because I've got the cavities and highlights there. So obviously we want the brush a lot lower than that. Probably want a darker colour. In fact, I'll sample this and just vary the colour of this a bit. So maybe a bit, a bit of reds in places. So it's very light there. Maybe, maybe I can change the brush. I mean, it's debatable really. I could... Um, go for a um, texture and actually just bring in a rock texture and sort of start painting it on. See how it looks, shall we? So I'll create a, um, so with my brush, usual way, and we've talked about this before, unless you're here for the first time, but you can come across to um, the uh, texture part here. Texture mask is for your brush head, so like Photoshop brushes, think of those when you're thinking texture mask, but texture is an actual texture. So if I press new texture here, then I go down to the texture panel, to find that texture, which is that texture two, just double check that was texture two. Where is it? Where's it gone? Texture 002. Yep. It's a good idea to name these things, really. I've got loads of fluff on me now. What have you done, Frank? It's... Yeah. Um, texture two, back to texture two, and image or movie. So let's open up and find a rock texture. So I've got loads of textures. You can see all my folders here and textures. Uh, there's probably one just in here somewhere. I mean, there's some cool, funky stuff there with my hand-drawn mud that I made, um, if I do say so myself. Uh, what, have we, what else have we got? Any rocks anywhere? Have you see any rocks? I mean, there's sort of a rocky texture there. Um, let's try that one. That's sort of rocky, isn't it? Now, it's very grey, but if I go back to my texture painting, I'll make sure I'm a rock colour. 
So I've got that texture in there, it's very gray like I was saying, but we can change the color so I can change it to blue and make a sort of bluey rock texture from here. So that's working and we're getting a sort of blue texture. It doesn't seem to be coming through that well actually. Um, let's up the, and uh, make sure it's coming through. I can't really tell that's coming through, but it should be. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's so rocky in the background that we're not really able to see. But I'll just, um, oh yeah, you can sort of see it a bit more there. Well, that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? So going a bit more towards the gray there, it looks a bit better. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, isn't it? Okay, so I'm gonna undo that. So I was just sort of testing it out and thinking, right, now I want the dark bits maybe these sort of rocky bits in sort of darker areas. So it's got a, it's quite a dark tone, isn't it? Even though it doesn't seem to be there. Hmm, interesting. I can uh, change the modes as well. I'm tiled at the moment. There's stencil. So I can bring the stencil in with right click and sort of use it as a stencil. Like this, I always find it's a bit tricky to see what you're doing. And um, in this case, I think random is probably going to be the better one. The one really, um, strong brush there so I'm going to turn that down a little bit and yeah it's strength to about 50% cool even at 50% that's doing a lot isn't it there we go so we're just a bit of color variation and in the crevices so I'm doing even more in the crevices but this is stylized and I'm sort of giving it a bit of ambient inclusion and thinking about where the lights coming from Hopefully this will make sense. Uh, make sure you at Grant Abbott if you've got a question because then I can just glance at the um, uh, the stream and see if anybody's got a question. So um, at Grant Abbott, A-B-B-I-T-T, -T, some people spell it wrong, uh, even though it's all over, pasted all over my channel, but it is a bit of a weird one to be honest, I must admit. Um, my teachers used to always spell it wrong. Um, I think they spelt it, you know, the Blender Nest thing I do, which is that sort of discussion channel, they spelt it wrong on there. <laughs> uh, I keep meaning to tell them, but I keep forgetting. But still, I'm not that, I'm actually not that fussed um, how people spell it, but it means that I won't see it if it's in orange. So if you have a question, at Grant Abbott, and then I'll be able to see this question because it'll highlight for me. Okay, let's see how that's looking. Interesting. It's not, I don't think it's great at the moment. It's not too bad. Lower the strength and just dab it on around the place. It's looking more realistic. I keep, I can't help but go a bit realistic. Uh, it's just, um, I, I suppose that's how I'm training at the moment is to try and make things look like they look. And the next stage after that is to go sort of um, stylized, and I'm not really at that stage with my artwork. I know it sounds uh, odd to say that, even though I'm supposed to be a pro at this and stuff, but I still feel like I've got a long way to go. Okay, that's looking kind of interesting. Let's change the color slightly. Let's give it a more of a brownie tone. Um, I feel like it keeps going darker, so I'm going to brighten that up. In fact, let's let's really brighten it up and see what it looks like around the top here. Um, so give it sort of warmth around here. Might be a bit. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? And just highlight areas this time. Um, so kind of not related to this stream, but for a beginner artist who really wants to get into 3D sculpting of characters and getting into making custom environments, where should I start? Um, uh, well, there's a beautiful playlist from Grant Abbott. Uh, his channel's, he's quite good, you know, uh, and he's got a sculpting intro. Um, but that's basically, is uh, start off small. Uh, so you want to sculpt characters, but don't go characters yet go faces first you know like cartoon characters nice easy things that's what I've done in my um, that's what Grant Abbott's done in his um, beginner guide he's got like a little monster there probably going to do another one actually fairly soon um, of that because I quite enjoy doing that sort of course um, yeah uh, so look at Grant Abbott's channel he's, he's, he
feel like it's that's really low, but it's still having quite an effect. It's quite strange. Um, where were they? Yeah. So um, yeah. So start with really easy things, uh, just fun characters, uh, and then build up slowly. Just slowly add detail to these things, uh, and then um, yeah. Uh, then you won't get disappointed thinking, oh, why can't I not make a um, Fortnite character or whatever you might want to make. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Sorry for off, off topic. I only use May and I can't seem to get my head around texturing and painting. Any tips or tutorials you can point me to? Um, yeah, I mean, look at 2D artists and how they do things and then see if you can mimic techniques from them. Um, uh, that's probably the main advice I would give. Maybe give Blender a try because this is quite fun and there's some great tutorials from th this guy. Grant Abbott, I don't know whether you've heard of him, he does some fantastic tutorials. Uh, make sure you uh, watch the adverts when you're um, watching his stuff because uh, it'll help support him. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, give Blender a try. Uh, because, uh, I don't know, does Maya have texture painting? I'm being silly. Um, so uh, I don't know how good the tutorials are for texture painting Maya. Um, or Maya. Uh, Maya. So maybe uh, if there's not many tutorials, then look at um, other because I suppose that's probably what I specialize in is the texture painting side of things um, it's getting there isn't it it's getting there um, so uh, the, my channel is one place to start with the texture painting I'm, I'm trying to think there's there must be other ones uh, JNM does a few doesn't he but he's very eclectic in his what he does he does a few more sculpting than anything and programming he does some really good stuff in programming um, is the rock missing some moss now I'm debating about how to do the moss hmm uh, I keep thinking do I want to do a particle system and I don't think I do do I want to create an object on top that I um, make into some moss and so it's sort of surrounding um, areas I think that's probably the best way blobbing moss on here might be better and then sort of texture painting that is probably going to be the way it's a it's a tricky one though um, I could try painting some moss, and maybe I'll do that as a separate layer, so I can show you layers in a second. How are we doing for time? Yeah, we'll do it fine, aren't we? Um, don't bother trying to texture paint in Maya. Okay, so and don't bother with Maya. <laughs> I mean, obviously, people are going to say Maya's rubbish because this is more a Blender stream. Um, so you take those comments with a pinch of salt, uh, unless if you've actually used Maya and you've switched to Blender, then maybe comment, but. If you don't know how to use Maya, then don't. I mean, I, I don't know. And I don't mean to be rude about the people who are commenting because I kind of agree with them, but it's been ages since I've used Maya, um, Maya so I can't really talk with any authority. Um, uh, haha, thank you for the advice. I'll definitely start with that Grant Abbott guy you talk about. Yeah, give him a try. Watch the adverts. Uh, switch to Blender, switch to Blender. <laughs> uh, currently working on car model as a game asset and currently achieved a count of 4,000 faces is that manageable as a car game asset yes I think it is yeah I think that's a good count in fact um, depends on the platform though if it's mobile then definitely not um, but uh, well actually definitely not it's, if it was your main car then possibly uh, low poly metable moss particle system might maybe metable moss particle system um, yeah tricky let me think. I'll finish the uh, rock. I just want to get a bit more color variations in there. I'm thinking possibly coming across to the greens a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Just a touch. Getting a bit Bob Rossi now with the low tone and volume. <laughs> and, oh, happy accident. Well. Wow. There we go, just doing some color variations in here like this. This text is working out for me, I think. It's adding sort of interest. But remember, I've got my cavity there. If I take this off, if I mute this, um, can you see how different it looks? But then I bring it back. Now we've got that cavity back in there. So I'm painting over some of the cavity stuff in here uh, with my moss material. Uh, but it's sort of flattening it out and it's sort of working I think um, personally I think it's working reasonably well and I quite like the look of it quite like the look of it if I do say so myself um, 
I do wonder, since every 3D artist has different opinions, but how much does traditional 2D art, digital or paper, help you with modelling, sculpting, in your opinion? If you are sculpting, then I think it's massive. Uh, if you're doing anything arty, then if you're, um, like hard surface modelling, maybe not so much. If you're doing things with modifiers, maybe not so much. You need to be just good at observation. It doesn't hurt to be good at art, um, but you can get by uh, without having artistic skill if you're really sort of, um, oh, that's not so good, is it? Yeah, yeah we'll work on that. Um, I can actually just go to colour as well. There's my mix mode. But, um, yeah, it's about artists. Um, but I think uh, artists are very good at observing uh, and uh, seeing shapes and then being able to convert those into um, 2D. And it's the same for a 3D artist looking at shapes and understanding how it works in 3D. So um, you may not be good at drawing. Oh dear, that's that's not quite right, is it? Um, let's see what that will look like with a bit of moss on there. Let's see how that... Oh, that could work quite nicely actually, so I might do some of that. But I'll do that as a separate layer. Um, so we'll do the come, come to the moss in a second. Um, yeah, so I would say um, it is important to um, have um, artistic skill if you want to get into things like sculpting. Um, but uh, there are other things where you don't need so much artistic skill, but you'd be surprised how much artistic skill you might have. It still is artistic skill if you can observe and understand and convert that into um, sort of digital format sort of thing. Uh, I do want to say, oh, yeah, sorry, uh, glad you're doing tutorials focused on 3D for games, as a lot of tutorials mostly generate two high poly count meshes for video. Yeah, um, I try and keep the poly count down, uh, poly count, poly count count, uh, poly count down, um, poly count, poly count down for two reasons. One it, uh, is games, but also it means everybody can do it because their computer should be able to handle it. Uh, just about. Uh, if, I mean, if it's a complete potato, uh, then uh, then yeah, it will struggle. But generally speaking, um, you should be able to uh, do most game model stuff. Um, yeah, uh, if yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying. Uh, cool. How are we doing? Uh, everybody seems happy because you're still sticking around. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's talk about layers. Layers. Oh, I hate that. I want to bring out this window, but it's, look at this, it's so hard to get. There we go. Gotcha. Gotcha. We don't need this so much anymore, so I'll just keep it there for prosperity. It's behind me anyway. There we go. I'll move over there. <laughs> Not that we can see that. Shall I just link those together? I might need it later on, so I'll, I'll keep to it. Okay, I mean, it's it's got layers at the moment. This is a layer, in a sense, an overlay layer. But we can add another layer to this. So, we, oh, I do need this. Look, <laughs> I'm going to add a new, new image. In fact, I'll do this a slightly different way this time because I keep doing it in here, but you can do it over here as well, up the top here. So I've got loads of stuff in here. Rock cavity, rock color, rock cavity again, and the normals. So there's four texture maps, and I'm going to add another one. And this is going to be a color again. But this time, I am going to keep the alpha because the alpha is the transparency. And go to the color and bring the alpha right down so it's see-through. So the whole image is just a see-through layer. Layer. Oh, save. Oh, save. What a great idea. Who came up with that idea? Uh, gold star for um, Sheila Frank Frankel. Is that what it's Sheila? Um, and Elizabeth Lud Ludwig. Thank you very much. Uh, so have I saved this at all yet? Rock color? Well, I'll save it. Oh, no, I haven't. Do you know, I haven't saved that at all. God, that is disgraceful. Yeah, save as. Okay, so um, where are we? Getting there with our rock. It is looking kind of cool. I quite like this. <laughs> saving is important <laughs> okay so um, yeah so over here I can create a new texture uh, I was saying that earlier wasn't I uh, base color alpha bring it all the way down uh, and then we've got a transparent layer I'm going to call this moss layer and I'll type in color at the end of it so I know it's a color layer yep and then press ok so now we've got a layer um, it hasn't oh it's appeared over here whoop and we need to uh, which way is it? I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, we can, this can be our first layer. And then we can put the moss. Actually, what is the best way? Probably in here, actually, if it's the color. 
No, it wants to be on top. It's a bit confusing. And Blender nodes are confusing like that when you're doing layers. And I'm not sure it's the best system. I'm going to uh, maximize this so you can see what's going on. So we want the um, rock color. Uh, and we want this influence in the rock color. Yep, so they're influencing each other. Um, but the cavity, we don't really want in influence in the moss. We want it right on top of the cavity. So we want that to happen last in this line because this happens first, the color, then the cavity is put on top of it, but we want the moss on top of that. So we want to combine these two. So uh, control shift and combine those two. A bit confusing that, I know. Okay, so we've combined these two. Um, you always have this coming into the bottom. Uh, so uh, that's sort of like the layer that's gonna be on top of that one, uh, which is weird because it's at the bottom, but it's on top. <laughs> really confusing. Put it all the way out to one. Now you'll see this won't make any difference. Uh, so. Oh, it has. Well, yeah, it won't make any difference in rendered mode. I don't think Oh, it's because I'm in texture paint mode. It's looking at the alpha. Um, so you can, uh, but let's go back to layout quickly. Okay. That's interesting. It shouldn't make any difference, should it? Because it, oh, it does because it, I haven't put the, plug the alpha in. So the factor is saying, um, now there we go. Sorry, I'm being stupid. Um, we're all quarantined. Uh, yeah, so uh, so this color is going into here, but there's nothing there. That's why it was showing black until I put the alpha in to say, yeah, and it's transparent. And then it was, oh, okay, I'll remove that. Uh, but it was putting black in because there was nothing going in. Okay, now if I click on this, make sure moss color is selected. Make sure it's selected here as well. Now I should be able to paint with some green. Let's get a moss texture, shall we? Should we get a moss texture? Uh, okay, um, let's close this one down, create a new one. I'm going to call that moss, moss brush. Why are you this talented? I like gold star for you. <laughs> uh, did you do the HP to low poly bake on stream? Yes, I did. So if you rewind me, oh, I had to do it. Um, I'll rewind after check it out. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, so I want some moss. We're we going to moss textures. So let's go to our textures and see what we've got. Let's open up. I don't know if I've got any moss textures actually. I might have to quickly download some. There's a grass texture here, which might work. Sorry, I'm going into all my textures. These are textures.com do some good stuff. There's some grass that looks quite good. And I think that's going to work for us because I can just make it really green and that might end up being mossy. So we're going to go for that. Uh, let's come in here. Am I on green already? Oh, so let's back to our. So that's the brush. Brought that in. Back to our moss layer, nice and green. I've got some moss reference images. So here's Purif, and there's some moss. There's some really bright, vivid moss. I'm not sure how bright I'm going to make it in here, um, but probably more like this sort of style. It'd be good if I could color pick from there, but I don't think I can. If I go to the color picker, well, it's disappeared anyway. In fact, I, I just can't, I don't think. Anybody know a way? Is there, can I pick a color from here? Don't know. Uh, anyway, I'll try and find a similar color to them. So it's a little bit darker, less saturated. Of course, not easy actually. About there, I think. And let's start painting it on. Now, nothing's happening. <laughs> ah, it's because I've got really low strength. And I'm on color. <laughs> and that's not going to work. None of these mixed layers will work because there's nothing it's painting onto. It's painting onto a transparent layer here. So none of these mixed layers are going to work until I go to mix mode, which is actually adding color. Procedural moss texture, I and mean, that could take ages. So we're just going to paint it on like this, which looks horrendous. That looks absolutely awful. <laughs> let's try and bring this up a little bit. That's a bit better. Uh, okay, let's see what it looks like just as is. That's interesting. That should be on zero. I feel like something's going wrong there. I suppose I'm on random, so it doesn't look particularly nice. Let's let's just see what tiled looks like. So it should be a tileable texture. Hmm. So the size seems a bit small, doesn't it? I mean, actually, what texture resolution is that? I should have checked that. Maybe I need to get rid of that if it's rubbish. Let's just check my textures. Textures, where are you? Grass. That might be a really low resolution because it's coming out really rubbish, isn't it? Uh, where's it gone? Where are you? There you are. Oh, that's all right. Hmm, that's weird. 
Well, I can scale it. Which way do I want to go? I want to go... So that's like three or something. That's not very good, is it? Rubbish. Disappointing. Very disappointing. Let's go brighter then. Oh, actually, I suppose that is true. And maybe it's just not a very good brush. Yeah, that's not working, is it? That didn't seem to work either, did it? My mapping. Let's try... Yeah, I'll undo that. Let's try this again on 10. No, that's not working. I thought that's how we... Well, that obviously doesn't isn't the way you do it. Let's go back to... Let's try stencil. Yeah, it's not doing particularly well, is it? No, I don't like that much. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe. I was thinking that, um, I think I did some of that earlier, actually. I did a sort of green colour when I was doing this moss. You can see it there, and it doesn't look too bad, but it doesn't look great either. It's tricky because maybe I need a blob, a sort of blobbed moss, and it might look better. Let's just try that then. Uh, new, and I, I'll do this the other way, texture mask. So this is my brush head. We'll create a new there, so like Photoshop brushes, remember? Um, and just seeing if we're all right, everybody's happy. Um, and let's go to the mask and then choose a noise brush then. Noise. Okay, uh, I'm still on stencil, so let's go back to there and just use the random again. Should update in a second. Oh, that's weird. Why are you not updating? Texture three. Oh, texture four. Look at that. It caught me out that did, didn't it? Let's come down to here. Texture mask and go to texture four. Oh, there's already one there. I could have just used that. And then change this to a greeny color. And, oh. Texture. Well, a texture came back. That's weird. So it created a texture here as well. That's a glitch, isn't it? Because I created a new one in here and it put it in the texture. Interesting. So I'm on random. And it's creating some moss. There's a little glitch in the texture there. Yeah, it does not look a good colour at the moment, so let's darken that a bit. So it's creating some moss in here, around here. I'm not sure this is going to work, but it's on a separate layer, so it doesn't matter. I can just delete it. Um, hmm. Actually, I'm going to turn this off and do a thick layer to start with, like this. It all makes sense in a second. Okay, so I've got a nice thick layer. There is a definite glitch there, though, isn't there? Look at that. And can you see that long, thin line? That's frustrating, isn't it? And that's really going to come through. Um, and that's, yeah, that's uh, because I didn't sort out my normal. Yeah, look at that long, thin triangle makes it very difficult for it to texture. Um, you can get away with it by coming into here, finding that, let's find that um, dot. And let's actually find it in here. Oh, um, the UV editing mode will be easier. Find it in here. And then you can actually paint on this and it will help. So you can see in there it's all sort of splodged and stuff. So if I go to my, um, where is it called? Moss layer color. That's annoying. <laughs> And you can see it trying to paint there, but there's a weird, yeah, it's cut out there. Look at that, how dreadful that is. So over here, where is it? Yeah, so I can paint on here. I can go to image editor, yep, and then paint. And then I've got a very big brush at the moment. And hopefully that will Sort it out a bit. We shall see though. Is that working? Is it disappearing? It sort of is, and it not it's the other part now, isn't it? The bit around the other edge. So it's a bit problematic, isn't it? There we go, there they are. And it's disappeared. Ish. But that's not great fun, is it? Having to do that. Okay, so let's go back to text paint mode. So you can just about see it there still. Okay, so I've got that going on. And then I'm going to bring back my colour now. Uh, just seeing mould looking, yeah, <laughs> mouldy moss. Uh, go to a brighter colour, and but also go to my texture mask and bring back the noise. Let's just check there's none on in here. So this is going to be sort of on top of the moss, so it's sticking out. 
I'm not sure that's going to work. I might have to. Yeah, I think it needs to be a model in itself, really. Because it doesn't look very good, does it? And we need a, a few variations of it in terms of color and stuff to try and make it look a bit more like moss. But I don't think that's working so well. Oh, it's sort of just about working, isn't it? It's not, it's just not that great. This is going to hit the light a bit more. I'll go to the screen brush. Um, make it very sort of, just give it a, not too much, a little bit, as if it's catching the highlights. Is that going to work? It's just about, it's not great though, is it? And I suppose they'd have to put that all the way around. Hmm. I mean, it's a new, it's a different layer, so I don't have to worry. Reduce the transparency. Um, yep, I could do that. Uh, what's the? Now that's a. Oh yeah, sorry. It's actually I don't know how to do that. Just think, because there needs to be something. Oh, then I'd have to set up a mix node in here with a transparent node. That's a real pain, actually. You see, that's where the layer system um, is a pain. So what you'd have to do. Oh. It's a bit of a killer. So you come up here. Um, yeah, so you'd have to have a mix node with a transparent layer. And then that goes into, oh, it's just not worth setting up actually. <laughs> um, I can't get over how realistic the textures are. They, they, is that sort of working? I suppose once it's put some plants in here. I was going to go sort of more cartoony though, and less realistic, but it's sort of, the rocks seem, I don't know, we're going a bit, this is stylized, but this is a bit real, isn't it? I don't know, I don't know, is that working? I wanna, I'll keep going, I'll keep trying things out. I'm just gonna go with a multiply now and see if we can't get this looking a bit better. And create some sort of um, crevice in here. The multiply will only paint on my actual layer. So you can see I can paint over here, nothing's happening because it's a multiply. It will only multiply the color that's available, and that's this lot here. That's sort of looking like moss now, isn't it? It's not actually that bad, is it? <laughs> I don't know. Could you use the moss layer as a bump map through a color ramp instead of a displacement? The bump node has a normal input for the normal map you already have. Yeah, um, it wouldn't be a, a displacement, but yeah, I could I could even paint on a um, some bump on here. Oh, well, should we try that? Would you like to see me paint on a bump map? I'm thinking of time, actually. I'm past my time because I, did I start at three? I can't remember what I did today. Yeah, so um, how would people, if I started at two and finished at four, would people prefer that? Um, ah, all over 3D, nice to see you. Uh, yeah, this is probably a bit over the top, and uh, you wouldn't really do this as a game asset, because it's just, unless um, your game was the woodland rock, and then it was only this, uh, then yeah, maybe. <laughs> I know what you mean, Olev. Um uh, but yeah, this is way too over the top. Um, it's more about just creating some art and having some fun. Uh, no talk of Corona, please. Ashok. <laughs> um, it's incredible, but I still want the clay shader, though. Please. The clay shader? What's that about clay shader? I can't remember now. Oh, yeah. So, um... Ah, yeah, no. I, di uh, I got... I misunderstood. I'm not doing a clay... Uh, clay shader thing. I thought you meant in terms of the rock. Is it sort of clay shader type thing? Um, I got confused there. Okay, so let's paint on uh, a bump map. So I'll move this up. Uh, so I'll, I'll I'll show you the setup for that. So we need a bump map. So uh, vector bump. Now um, it shouldn't matter that I've gone into a normal map first, but you don't actually need to. You can just go straight in like this. But this way you can actually change the strength of the normal map, and I don't think it affects it. Um, so let's actually test that out, because I can control left click on there. That's what that looks like, and that's what that looks like. They both look the same, so it's fine. Um, but you can just go straight in color to normal like that. That's fine. But what we need is a new, 
God, it's just getting Node City now, isn't it? Um, but we create a new layer. I mean, I could try using this moss layer as the bump. Could just plug that straight in. We'll do that first. I'll do that first. Okay. So there's this moss layer. So I'll shift D to duplicate. We can just hook it up there, but it's just a bit neater this way. And plug the color into the height. Uh, and let's see. There we go. Uh, it is working. It's not great though because um, it's not very high res and it's too strong. Now, this is interesting, isn't it? Because um, we need now, we can't, if we change the strength here, that will change both of them. Uh, or does it? Oh, I thought it did, but it doesn't. It just changes, changes your moss. It sort of works. It's not great. I don't like it much, but it sort of works as moss. Probably about there, actually. Do you know that actually works quite well? Not too bad. Maybe 0.15. We need more of the poly video tutorials. What do you mean poly videos, though? Um, do you mean low poly? Low poly. Oh, sorry. This is the next comment. Uh, yep, uh, I'll do some more low poly at some point. I quite don't like doing low poly. Okay, that actually looks okay. If the top was covered like that, I think that would look all right. What do you reckon? Doing all right? Uh, that's why your grass texture looked so bad as well, the low res. Yeah, I mean, it, um, it, did I do that? Did I do it 1024 by 1024 instead of 2048? That was bad of me, wasn't it? That was very silly of me. <coughs> um, I suppose I could take that into Photoshop and up the resolution, and maybe I'll do that before I render. Um, looks good to me. Thank you, Poser Craig Kid. <laughs> Uh, yeah, sh um, yeah. I mean, keep going with Node School. I'm going to keep going with Node School, and you'll figure this lot out eventually. Um, I'll share all my knowledge. <laughs> uh, the wooden rock <laughs> sounds like a puzzle or sandbox game. Uh, yeah, that's this, that's what I was thinking. It's uh, it's copyright, by the way. I've just copyrighted it, so um, you can't use that brilliant idea I just came up with. <laughs> uh, random question: How would you model real a reel of tape? Having a, uh, having a hard time with things wrapping around other things. Yeah, you don't actually want to do that. You want to do a cylinder and then just have a plane coming out of it and then texture that cylinder. Uh, don't try and make it wrap all the way around. That's an absolute pain. Um, when I'm doing beauty shots, I give it the full 4K treatment. Yep. Uh, hello, Charlie, by the way. Uh, yeah, um, I probably should have done that. I was worried about my computer turning into a potato. How tall are you, Grant Abbott? Just asking. I'm six foot two is my height. Uh, height. Uh, that doesn't look great, does it? It's sort of passable. I think when we get the whole lighting involved. So what do we got? Um, there's. So I won't paint the whole top of it today, I don't think, because I'm running out of time. Actually, I ought to end the stream now. Um, but let's go into back to previous right, layout mode. Um, so I've got low poly. What's going on there? It's that one. There we go. Uh, plants. We've got a few plants. And I was going to go stylized. So I've got... Oh, where are they gone? Oh, they're over here. Uh, let's just... So you can see these sort of stylized plants that I might end up putting in there. Depends on what I decide. So let's hide that one. Uh, I think it's this one that I'm using. Yes, yeah, so you can see them in there. They look a bit silly at the moment, but you can sort of see how they might work. Might do. Don't know, they'd need a fair bit of playing with. Uh, but once we do that, uh, we've got, uh, I won't do the floating, I didn't finish the floating particles, but we've got camera and lights. If we go now to rendered mode, we've got this sort of thing going on. But where is my world tab? Let's just go to the world. Oh yeah, so I've got my volume just there. And now we're sort of starting to look interesting, isn't it? when it's like that. I mean, the, we lose a lot of the detail in some of the colors and things. So I was thinking of having some glowing mushrooms on the side that will then show the colors again uh, in different areas, maybe on the side of the cliff, some um, glowing uh, things and stuff. But we can see that full screen. You can, and maybe brighten up this area of moss. I could even add um, possibly a bit of an emission to this. So the moss is really sparkling um, or just maybe a really high um, a value. Um, tall boy. <laughs> Hello from Egypt. Hello, SS. Hello from Denmark. Hello from Bangladesh. 
Uh, plants make a big difference. Yeah, uh, I think they will do eventually. And uh, the the right sort of lighting. It's not quite right yet, uh, but it's getting there. You can see I've I'll go through this sort of lighting setup another time, but I'm putting a what's called a cookie or a flag in front of it like that to give it this sort of interesting look. But we are getting there. It's looking in. It's interesting, isn't it? It's not quite there, but maybe this moss will work. Maybe. Hmm. I'm having fun though. Um, uh, epic. Very nice. Well, should be more patchy in my opinion. Yes. Yeah. I'll have a think about that. I might change this moss and do actual um, a, mo a model to make the moss out of. Uh, thank you, Mike Evans. <laughs> Hope you're doing well too. Uh, duplicate top faces and separate them by adding a displacement modifier for the moss. Yes. So I could get... Um, Blender test guy. Uh, so I could select all these top faces, duplicate them, move them up slightly maybe, I put a solidify modifier on them, and then I've got a separate mesh that I can do some moss with, and that might work quite well, yep. Yeah. Um, we'll see rest later. Thanks again for the fun. Nice to see you, Sheila. Uh, pose Cray Kid, uh, I look down for a minute, and bam, so pretty. <laughs> yeah, it's just the, it's just the lighting. Um, and lighting is absolutely key. I'd like to get some backlighting to this as well. Um, I'm under quarantine with suspected COVID-19, but I'm doing okay. Can't stop me watching. Uh, cool stuff, Mike. Sorry to hear you're not doing well. Um, I hope you get better soon. Um, so let's, should we experiment with some lighting? Um, so layout mode. Uh, I'll go back to Eevee so I can get the stuff. Let's grab this one, pull it down there and pull that in there. This might not work because um, I haven't really experimented with the way this is. <laughs> I'm not sure I can pull this one off. Uh, let's go now back to, yeah, that's that's interesting, but it's not what I was after. Um, I'd have to think about the volumetrics and how that's going to work. No, that's not going to work like that, is it? <laughs> it's kind of fun though, isn't it? That's the great thing about um, Eevee. If I um, maybe bring that right down, to, because it's 10,000 at the moment. There we go. Bit bit of a sort of back glow there. I could even bring this in closer. Um, oh. oh, it's going through. What's that thing I need to put on? Uh, shadow contact shadows. It's still not getting. It's not. It's not working. Actually, it's still going through. It's probably just EV glitches. Oh, I didn't duplicate it. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? Shift D. Oh, silly me. So let's go back to layout mode. Sorry, um, look, Dev. Let's point that back at our thing. Silly. Grab that. Point it inwards. There we go. Right. So it's going through this flag. That's what um, creates uh, that nice effect. Um, if I turn the strength up again, ten thousand. And let's go to see. It's shining through, and then goes through the flag and creates those cool shadows. And actually, that looks better with the backlight now. You can see that backlight there. I don't know if I can select it. Uh, and if I hide it, I've got it selected. <laughs> Where's that light? Camera and lights, it should be in there. The wrong one? That one. Yeah, so actually that does, it does help slightly, doesn't it? Adds a bit of back lighting and glow. Not much though. Um, but yeah, uh, maybe put some mushrooms, uh, toastals in there and stuff like that. Um, why aren't you on Instagram? I am on Instagram. Uh, yep, uh, I think the link's in the description. Don't put a huge amount on there, but I'll probably put this on. It's good fun. It kind of it's kind of working, isn't it? It's almost there. I need this moss needs more, but um, we'll get there. I was thinking of doing a particle system with some grass. Where's that gone? Let's go back to um, where are you? Where's my plants original? There you are. So I created some grass as well, and I was going to do a particle system. I probably could just place this on. In fact, um, yeah, I, sh I shan't do that at the moment. But because a particle system, I'll have to set up the top faces. Um, as a vertex group, so I'll have to do some white painting and then figure out the rotation. That's always gets me with particle systems. It never um, comes out as you expect. It really never does. Um, How do you make the fog or mist? Okay, in shady mode, it's under the world tab and you can see it's got the normal HDRI into the background. I can actually lower the strength of this background and it can uh, look even more interesting. Um, as you can see there, so that's the background adding a bit of ambient light. Um, probably actually strength of 0.9 is quite good. But here's the principal volume. So if I take that off, that's what it looks like 
um, just with the light going through the flag, which is actually kind of interesting in itself. I quite like that actually. Although it needs, I'll make my, <laughs> I'm really starting to mess about. But um, yeah, so principled uh, volume. So uh, shift A, add f uh, shader, and then principled volume is there. So it looks like that, yeah. Um, what you will find when you plug it in uh, by default, it's on one. So it looks like that. <laughs> and I think we, we can't even see the light. So point one, Ooh, point one. And uh, now we can start to see what's going on a bit more. And we get those streams of light. But the streams of light are going through this, what's called a cookie. I'm going to turn my overlays back on and scale the cookie down a bit. There you go. And we get that sort of effect. It's sort of, it's sort of working. I feel like it's... I mean, it, it's a bit square. Can you see these square bits? That's oh, not too bad, actually. It's when I move around, it looks bad. When I still... I mean, I could subdivide the cookie. So, subdivision surface modifier and make them all blobby. Oh, yeah, I said blobby. <laughs> I haven't said it at all today. That's the first time today. There we go. Um, is it possible to get the backlighting, a backlight to light the model without affecting volumetrics? I was just thinking that myself, and I'm not sure. I don't know how to do it. Uh, what about a rim light? Yeah, that's what I was doing with the backlight, um, but it's affected by the volumetrics. So we were, uh, where's that light gone? Uh, find that somewhere. Where are you? There. So there's a slight rim light there, but like we're saying, it's affected by the volumetric, so it looks a little bit busy, doesn't it? It is it's working, but it's not great. So that was that one, wasn't it? So if I try and uh, make it a proper rim light, by going to 5,000, it suddenly lights everything up and it's just not quite there, is it? Um, but we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, yeah, I'm not, not sure. Can you make it so it's not affected by the volumetrics? Not sure. Um, how does the fog look in cycles? Uh, it will take ages to render. You might be able to get it working, I don't know. Like that. <laughs> Much more dense. Uh, it's, it was actually fairly quick. The principal volume though, it's better than I thought it was. Whoa, very noisy. It's a bit more atmospheric, isn't it? Um, perhaps, I mean, there's loads, but I suppose I can probably go up with the background a bit more. Interesting, isn't it? I feel like the density, I'm changing with the anis, and uh, what's it called? Anisotropy. Anisotropy. Um, but yeah, it looks kind of interesting. It's not quite there though, is it? Let's try it full screen. It's uh, yeah. I mean, it's chugging away. It's with a 1070 GTX graphics card, so it's it's struggling. I prefer Eevee. Really, <laughs> prefer Eevee. There we go. Dunk. <laughs> Done. Uh, what's the best config for beginner in Blender, what do you mean config? Uh, because it's always configured the same way, really. Uh, always go for the 2.8. Uh, don't do the 2.79, if that's what you're asking. Uh, always go the most up-to-date configuration for Blender and go vanilla, as it were. Um, so pretty. Can you make another time a tutorial of a 3D model from a car with Blueprint? I'll possibly do something along those lines, yeah. Um, stay happy while the world is crappy. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Dominic. Appreciate that. Uh, Cycle's giving an interesting dank forest feel there, wasn't it? It certainly was, uh, Jason. Uh, looks more scary in Cycle's. Sky Cycle's is scary, to be honest, with the rendering times. <laughs> looks like it's from underwater. Yeah, that's right. Okay, I'm going to call it a day there, I think. Um, it's looking pretty interesting. Uh, lots more to do. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'll stream those next bits or maybe just show it another time. Um, tomorrow's stream is the competition results, so uh, we'll do that from 2 o'clock, I'm thinking. 2 o'clock till 4 o'clock tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I sure do have a happy smile. It's, it's, uh, a bit, it's my teeth that make it seem even more outrageously happy, isn't it? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so tomorrow competition results. If you want to join the competition, you can get across to the... Um, yeah, Pablo's doing a sorry, uh, a sculpting uh, stream, isn't he? So, yeah, we should uh, go and watch that next um, or rewind that. Blender today. 
uh, on there playing the main channel. Um, yeah, so tomorrow I'll be doing comp competition results from 2 to 4. Wednesday I'll probably be doing another stream from 2 to 4, making a game asset. And Friday is uh, making the um, stylized character. Um, so that's if you're following along with that, that's for Raymond. And that's a actual commission that I'm doing. Um, you can still enter the competition today. Yep, it ends at 12 midnight. Uh, and the theme is uh, Neon City or Future City sort of thing. Yeah, roughly that sort of thing. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Lena Lotus. I might need your help. Uh, are you around tomorrow to uh, help me with a, um, a, what you call it, a poll for the winner? That'd be really helpful. <laughs> I'm going to have a look at your photo. Send me a photo of your snow, Milan. Uh, I'm, I look forward to seeing that. Thanks for those people that donated, Milan and uh, David J, wasn't it? Yeah, um, much appreciated. Uh, means uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, in cycles, a light has a volume scatter toggle, toggle in object properties visibility just checked. Ah, so I could therefore uncheck one of the lights. Yeah, so I could do it in cycles. Thank you, uh, me Meal. Is that right? Uh, uh, thanks, Jason. Thanks, Sonny. Oh, sorry. Uh, what's the best way to get rid of noise? Uh, up the samples or use the denoise. I'll just quickly go and show you that. Over here, isn't it? Is it here? Can I remember where it is? No, it is under here, isn't it? Oh, it's because I'm in cycles. Sorry, I'm in Eevee. So under, in here, under cycles, we've got... I keep getting to the wrong place. Uh, so cycles down to here isn't it denoise data uh, and then into the compositor uh, use nodes move this across to the side and shift a filter denoise and hook up the normals and the denoise albedo that is your best result okay <laughs> a bit of quick whistle stop tour of the uh, denoiser uh, let's go back to Eevee um, Oh, that's your body temperature. Oh my goodness. That's no good. Um, yeah, so I was a bit confused as to, um, well dear. Uh, yeah, I was thinking it's minus, minus, uh, it sounded horrendous, the, the snow and stuff, but yeah, dash. I, oh, sorry to hear that, Milan. That's not sounding good. It's scary stuff, isn't it? Scary times. So I hope you all do, do keep safe and um, try and avoid contact with people where you can. It's not much fun though, is it? Um, but... There's always Gabbit Media to cheer you up and do some live streaming. <laughs> uh, sorry about that, Corey S. It's nice to see you, though. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, you'll have to do a bit of re rewinding. <laughs> kind of too much, but it was worth it. <laughs> Thanks, Tin. Oh, dear. Uh, just have a look. Anyway, um, yep, yeah, I'll call it a day there. Uh, and, uh, yeah, very it, really enjoyable. Uh, let's just quickly see the um, where are we shady mode. There we go. There's the final result, ish. It kind of look, it's looking fun, isn't it? I'm not sure about this moss, but we'll get there. Uh, thanks for watching, and uh, yes, I will uh, see you next time. Happy blending and stay safe.